Yo, what's poppin', y'all? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connor Cardenas. And before we get into it today, man, I just want to give a huge shout-out to the sponsors of Caffeine and Green, which are Thorn Street Brewery, coming straight out of North Park, and Seven Seas Roasting, coming straight out of South Park, both located in San Diego, California. That's right. Now, one of the benefits of having Seven Seas Roasting as the sponsor of Caffeine and Green is that they've afforded me a code that basically translates over to you, the listeners. That's right. And you are going to go ahead, head over to sevenseasroasting.com. You're going to pick any of the coffees that I'm about to, to tell you about, which is our El Jaguar, our, um, our espresso roast, and the non Kali coffee. Now, it doesn't include the, the charity roast that we have, which is the collective or the spikes roast. But you can pick the El Jaguar, which is chocolate, nutty, a little bit of citrus. It also has the uh, espresso um the espresso blend, which is an, a Guatemalan, an African, a Brazilian. So you're getting a little bit of acidity. You're getting a little bit of chocolate. It's buttery. I love it. Or you can get the non kali which is almond, a little bit of butter cookie, and some mango. It's very, very sweet. It's beautiful. Now, you can go ahead and get th- those three bags of coffee for 30 bucks. That's one bag of coffee for free. That is a no-brainer, y'all. So head over to 7 Go to the coffee tab. Select your three coffees. Go over to the promo code. Put in C-A-N-D-G. That's C and G at checkout. And you're going to get three bags of coffee for 30 bucks. My guests today are Marco Mastoso and Dalila Ercolani. They are a dynamic duo, a power couple, if you will. They're coming straight out of Rome, the hard streets of Rome, that's right, but they're in here in San Diego, and tonight, Marco Mostoso has made his return, and uh, as Dalila put it, she popped her cherry on uh, her podcast tonight, so it was great. They are, like I said, a dynamic duo. They brought you Mostoso Restaurant in Hillcrest, and now they're bringing you Mostoso Foods, available at Sprouts and other locations. They came back on because they've gone through quite the whirlwind and I've been, I've gotten to see my Stoso restaurant in its full effect and I was there on the last night that it closed and it was, um, it was quite emotional. I feel like it was, you know, to see the passion and the, the heart that they had put into that place and then, you know, to see what they're doing now and to hear that story about what went, you know, what happened and just in general. And I mean, we kind of went all over the place, but in like overall, having Marco on is always a pleasure. He's nothing short of amazing. Dalila is so funny. She's super cool and she killed it. I mean, she said she was nervous, but you know, when she's on the podcast and you listen to it, it, there was nothing wrong. She was killing it. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Marco, Dalila, this is your time to shine, homies. Let's go. Tone up. And we are live. We're live. Yes. Hello, hello. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Welcome to the podcast, Caffeine Cheers. and Green. You are here. Cheers. Cheers. Salute. 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 Cheers. Media world. Media yes. world. <laughs> yes. We are all live. Marco Maisoso. Dalila, what's your last name? Ercolani. Ercolani? Yes. Okay, Dalila Ercolani and Marco Maisoso. You are on Caffeine and Green. This is your return, Marco. Number two. Number two. two. Uh, due. <coughs> Numero due. Numero due. Numero due. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. And Dalila, this is your first time on the I show. I am. I'm a podcast newbie. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a podcast, vir- podcast virgin. <laughs> yes, popping that cherry today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and I mean, a lot of stuff has happened for all the listeners who who did listen to our podcast before. Um, it was quite the podcast. I don't know if you listened. Did you listen to it, Dalila? Parts of it. Parts of it. It was, it. Lo- it was long. Thing. It was long, but <laughs> it was also really, really good. Uh, a lot of things happened, where, especially where uh, Marco still is the only person who's ever come on the show that called people out. Mm-hmm. And talked mad shit, like yo, know, like <laughs> yeah. I, was I like, don't doubt it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Take your fucking award. I don't want it. <laughs> like, dude, to, still to this day, I I love it, and it was like shocking at the moment because I've never had that happen before. But um, as a as a podcast host, I was like, yes, like yeah. Marco's <laughs> fucking unfiltered. He's raw. He's getting it. Um, but 
when, at the time when we had uh, had you on last, the Michelin star rating had just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, my Stoso was in full effect in Hillcrest. Yep. And then mm-hmm. um, why are you back on the show? I mean, we've, we've done a couple events since then, mm-hmm. but then kind of, it seemed like to an outsider out of the blue, the restaurant closed. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of, let's, it, it was not really out of the blue for us. Okay. Uh, we know, we knew it was months that we were kind of struggling a lot with the landlord. Uh, we had an open discussion going on because we had, and this is the main reason why all of this happened. Uh, whatever people thinks, this is the real reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. We had one of the craziest rents in all over of San Diego. I n- actually, at this day, I never found somebody that it was that was paying more than us. We had 2,000 square feet and rent was 12,600. And then at the a end month? of a month. a month, and then at the end of the year, they came at us with an adjustment of triple nets with another six thousand six hundred dollars that makes over thirteen thousand dollars a rent per month. Yep. In that location, that honestly, I do like Hillcrest. I love Hillcrest. We had a good community vibe and everything, but it's not prime real estate like they want to sell it. It's a very difficult area actually to make something happen like there is an infinite number of restaurants closing of places closing i had two friends in the last six months that closed the restaurant in hillcrest coffee shop which was a very good coffee shop the one i brought yeah. you to yeah i've well, been to there multiple times yesterday she flew back to italy yeah Ta- same problem no yeah, way she just yeah. closed same her doors and left problem. and said see ya yeah. And moved like left the country. That's how yeah. bad it was. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah, because she lost a lot of money out of it, so it was pretty bad for her. Uh, she was paying for that little shop that she had. She was paying seventy five hundred dollars a rent, and she couldn't get the landlord to actually understand what's reality of business. Like, they don't care. They yeah. make you sign the contract, and then you're fucked forever. <laughs> At least Dude. for the, the years you signed the contract. How do you even survive? How do they expect you to survive? Yeah. Like, uh, just going to get care. that much business? Like, no, exactly. That's honestly, the point. they don't care. They, I don't even know if they want you to survive because once you sign, they know they got you. Anyways, that you make the money, you don't make the money, they don't yeah. give. They're a total still getting fuck. their money at the end of the day. So they don't, honestly, <laughs> as, I mean, they don't really care what happens to you. So, yeah, that's wow. how it works, apparently. Mm-mm. That is so unfortunate. So we tried to fix everything with the landlord. And for us especially, it was very difficult already because we wanted to do something more. Like, you know, I love Michelin. Um, I come from that school, Michelin. I got a Michelin star in Rome with a restaurant in Rome. And that's the kind of food that I love to do. And I love to give the experience to the people on that kind of experience, which I still think today in San Diego, and I'm taking out Addison because Addison is the exception for San Diego, there is none. Uh, There is no experience Michelin-wise, and I really think the city needs it. The city will see it in the next years, but I really want it to be part of that, and that takes investment. That takes real quality, not the quality everybody talks about, like, oh, my food is quality. No, food is not the main thing that calls out quality. Quality is the people working with you, is the time you put into a fucking recipe, is all the steps. The experience that you're creating at the restaurant. And the experience especially that you create at the restaurant. So at this moment, we're pretty far from that, but we really wanted to do it and we wanted to invest. But due to that base cost that we had, which was unreal, even if we were doing good, because we were actually in Hillcrest, we were the best restaurant in Hillcrest, not quality-wise, take out mm. all of that. Mm. I can say my food is the best food in the world. You can say no, I don't give a fuck, but we were the most busy restaurant in Hillcrest and we did not make it at the end of the month in a, in a sense, like we did not make it at the end of the month. Yeah, we were not making money. So the partners were never happy. We were happy because passionate about what we do, but not mm-hmm. really happy because we put in so much effort in something which is not bringing me a profit at the end of the month, uh, you lose your passion after a little bit for that. Yeah, after a little bit. How long was the restaurant open for? One year, nine months. One year, nine months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, you guys did that? So you, do you mind me asking, you operated at a loss for a year and nine months? Yes, sir. Wow. I had a salary which I put me at $45,000 a year, Mm -hmm. and I put in more than that. 
I bet. Yeah, so I was in a loss for two years, yeah. Fucking heavy. <coughs> yeah. Dude. <laughs> I still did it with a smile. Oh, of course. I mean, dude, I, I would have never known. Every yeah. time I came to the restaurant, it was just smiles and happy. I mean, like, mm-hmm. dude, since since you were on the podcast last, we did uh, that. That was like an eight-course meal. It was like CBD, mm-hmm. THC, mm-hmm. Yeah. infused. Uh, that? that shit was good. Yeah. That shit was tight. <laughs> and we were a part of that. We did CBD coffee for the desserts with you guys. Yeah. And, I mean, the food was amazing. I Because you kept just bringing over dishes while I was standing there, like, doing the coffee thing. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> dude, is this serious? It'd be like, four grams of CBD in this. Like, four grams of THC in this. Like, dude, what? Like, yeah. that shit was <laughs> tight. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean... That's the, what I liked most about the restaurant is like all the wine in the back, mm-hmm. like on that wall. And you had like that one older dude who was always there. Yep. Renato. The, oh, yeah. Shout out to Renato. I don't yep. know. The yeah. wife, the wife might be looking lovely. Hey, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, but I mean, that dude. was the hardest part. Let me say this. Actually, the hardest part of closing the restaurant, like personally, it's already kind of hard, like, it's yeah. hard. You never want to close a restaurant. You want it to be successful, but you have to accept reality of how things are. The real hardest part, it was realizing how tight the group actually was. Every single one of them, every fucking single one of them cried in the lapse of time. I gave the guys around three weeks of, no- of notice that I was going to close the restaurant. Every single fucking one of them cried at the end because they really had a good thing going on like we had a good thing we were a good team we were a good group yeah they really cared about their job and they bonded that was my main request for them when when you bring me a resume you want to work for me i don't give a fuck about what you did in the past i want you to be passionate i want you to have care for what you do that's the main 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 thing you have to show me and they really or all of them were like that Obviously, we lost a lot of people in the two years. Well, we went through a lot of people. <laughs> through, but yeah. that is but over normal. Yeah. I actually have seen, I collaborate with a restaurant downtown, and in four months, they hired over 120 people. In four what? months. Like, we had a total of 102 years. They did 120 no, not in even. four months. Yeah, not even 100, but... And for us, it was already like we Shocking. just got the <laughs> like what? How yeah. do we get through all these people? We just got the W twos yeah. to ship. By the way, if you guys looking, I have to ship you the W two. <laughs> 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 we just got them, and it's a fucking huge pile. And you're like, wow, all these people we hired. But then I saw Damn. their W twos in four months of opening. We, yeah. By the way, the foodery in San Diego and Market Street, really good place to eat. They have our pizza, so go. And they uh, they hired already over a hundred people in four months. There's in San Diego. There's really a cycle of people. That's you can just get a cooking job if you needed a cooking job in yeah, San Diego for Damn. sure. Yeah, cooking job for sure, dude. You want to be a server? That's difficult. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I mean, the last where the money is, right? Like exactly. it, because you're making the tips, the cash tips, and everything like yeah, that. Exactly. And you people work are like killing each hours. other for those jobs, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, like twenty hours a week, and you make two. Three hundred dollars a day, Fucking dude. Sick. I knew a bartender who worked when I was living in OB. She worked <laughs> three days a week. Mm-hmm. She in one night would make her rent. The rest of the two nights, she would like one night was working. She would make basically her car payment, mm-hmm. groceries, all that shit. And the third one was like, yeah, profit. I'm gonna make like yeah profit. <laughs> this is gonna be for me to go out on my trips. Yep. Three days a week. I'm like, what else do you do the rest of the week? She's like, chill. It's like, yeah. you don't get another job? Like, no, why not? I make th- yeah. what I'm, I make what people make in two weeks and three days. Yeah. She's like, why am I going to go out? And like, ex- like, she'd be living in OB just like summer. I'd be like, you're just going to chill? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, damn, must be nice. What is I'm, your yeah. life? I'm over, I, yeah, I'm over here busting my ass working like two, three jobs at times. I mean, like, dude, yeah. I worked. Yeah. I think at one point in my life when I moved back to San Diego in like 2016, I was working three jobs seven days a week. I feel you. I fucking think like, dude, like for a year and a half yeah. some shit like that you know how many yeah. times we sit we look at each other and say what are we doing we should just be waiters dude <laughs> why do we want to be entrepreneurs dude <laughs> fuck because that's where the just real money a is freaking right waiter. Man. really yeah i had the same thing in new york like because new york is really expensive as yeah. a city and a period that I wanted to save money i was working three jobs like breakfast in the morning actually coffee shop in the morning at 5 a.m get out of the house then go to lunch service in a restaurant and then go dinner service in the hotel that was my main job crazy i don't know and i didn't do cocaine 
Dude. This is, I, I, rem I saw my Facebook from like those years and every month I was saying, guys, if I don't do cocaine, you have no excuse in your life <laughs> to do cocaine. Yeah. Dude, really? I literally, people have asked me if I've ever done coke and I'm like, nah, bro, never in my life. But I just have this much energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you know, people I, do. I was just, I actually, it's funny you brought up the New York part because um, right before this, so I got off of work, kind of like what we're talking about, but not getting, like I wasn't paid for it, but like I... Went to work. I got off of work. I had, like went and grabbed everything for the podcast tonight. Came back. I probably was home for 45 minutes, maybe. And then uh, like just enough to grab grab everything, book it back. I had a meeting. I met up with um, this owner of Wholesome, like I think mm -hmm. I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. And then we had dinner. I saw their roaster, did their thing. And it was a mutual friend who had introduced us. And then I came right over here. But I'd spoken about you. I was like, yeah, I was having this guy, my Stoso, on. Um, he had a, a ABC News come into his house and like – and New York yeah. city and all this Gosh. stuff. That was fun. Dude. It's like <laughs> that, that shit to me is like, I, New York itself is gnarly, but like, I never, yeah. I, do, I just have that much energy. And the thing that, that reason I brought it up is because the hustle that you guys have, I've literally just, I, uh, fuck. I kind of lost my train of thought, <laughs> but, Oh, I remember what it was. I feel like, I'm running out of time. When I see mm -hmm. guys like you or yourselves, both of you, because you were both there, sorry. Um, I realize, like, I'm not even that old, but I feel like I'm running out of time. Mm -hmm. 33 years old. You see people like yourselves. You're taking the risks. You're, like, going out there. You're making shit happen. Mm -hmm. You take the L's, but then you bounce back. Yeah. Um, the yeah. L's is where you go. Dude, that's what it's, it's like. You grow. Every learning. Uh, dude, a <laughs> loss is not really a loss. It's a yeah. learning experience. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Do you, how do you guys think, what, what have you learned from this experience? What, what are you taking away from it to change for mm -hmm. the next time? Well, oh I, my have, God. I have a good answer. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would go on for the next if we're, 10 hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're talking real in San Diego, what I've learned out of this experience is to evaluate better the situation where I'm in and the situation that I'm getting into. Uh, I had a little bit of rush of wanting to open something in San Diego. And the first occasion or the first thing that came to me, I wanted to get it as fast as possible. Looking over that, I didn't see many things that I should have seen before. Mm -hmm. um, in part, I was scammed since the beginning. The rent that I told you about, I didn't know the rent was that rent until the second month I was paying the rent. Because I, w I was brought into this, yes. Oh, wow. Uh, I was brought in, and the number they showed me before signing that lease were different than after signing the lease. And the real difference it was the triple nets. Uh, they showed me the rent as it was supposed to be. It was base around rent. the base rent. It was 8600 for the first year. When we went to pay the rent, it was 12100 And we're like, 12, dude. 12700 600 Yeah. And, and we were like, what the fuck is this? And they're like, triple nets. And honestly, what, does that, what does that mean? <clears throat> exactly. Thank you for saying this. Because <laughs> honestly, even if I come from the restaurant business, I'm not just a chef that doesn't know how to operate a restaurant. I had restaurants before opening in San Diego. I went to them. And I'm like, what the fuck is triple net? And they tell me it's all the expenses that the mall has to keep going. So the electricity, the, the lamps in the parking lot, the guy that cleans the sidewalk inside of the mall, the security that we have 24 hours, which I won't even start saying how much bullshit all of this is. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the month, it was three grand, over three grand of triple nets. And I'm like, wait, you, <laughs> I'm fucking running a business here. You can't come to me with three grand and a half of this triple net thing at the end of the month. Yeah. Like w in a restaurant, you really should look at the sense that go away. That's it. You have to keep control of the people not stealing shit, a bottle of wine, and all of these small things. Yeah. And then you look at these motherfuckers come to you with a three grand a month expense. And you're like, whoa, this why, really changed. Why are you responsible for paying security and lighting? That's, who, yeah. that's like the property. <clears throat> it, yeah. it should be. Exactly. It should, it should be. be. But I mean, in, we actually saw like... Um, P&Ls of, uh, of, of what we we're paying for. And, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we're also paying for the salaries of the management of the mall, of the corporate, of yes, the corporation sir. of the mall. And we're like, 
Wait, I mean, this is That's absurd. Some it's yep. crazy. They, yeah. put, they had the courage to put it in because when I was like, yeah, give me the breakdown of what these triple nets are. It was like $300,000 a year for the salaries of the guy at, I'll, I'll call them out, fuck it, Regency Centers. Like, seriously, I have to pay this motherfucker's salary? Why? <laughs> what has doing? nothing to do what with your restaurant. What is he doing for me? Yeah. When I send an email, he answered back like two weeks after, and I have to give him, what, a percentage of $300,000 a year? Fuck you. Yeah, no. You're crazy. No, that's... Yeah, malls that's are definitely crazy. something to Whoa. stay away from. Yeah, if yeah. you want to open a definitely. restaurant, fuck malls. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so I, had, I, had I had a homie, I won't say who he is, but like, they, <clears throat> they had opened up a location in Oceanside, and it's since now closed. But he was telling me it was something like 30K a month yeah. for their coffee shop. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like what the shop. fuck? Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Dude, do you, and like, you have to pay the staff? That's just the rent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're at a running a coffee. How mm-hmm. much, dude, you have to be pumping. How much and this, coffee do you Yeah, have how much make? coffee do you have to be pumping out to like really like, or just pump up the prices? Like, same amount of coffee, but just the prices are mm-hmm. extremely inflated. But it's yep. like. They've closed. It didn't last very long, but it's like, dude, no way in hell. Mm-hmm. Like the only people who are going to be able to afford that is like Starbucks. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah. Not even. Even yeah. the Starbucks <laughs> in the mall where we were at closed. Yeah. Dude, I was just talking about you. this the other day up in Oakland when I went there um, over Christmas. I did not see one Starbucks in any of the airports. It was all Pete's now. And I was like, yeah. what? when mm-hmm. did this shift? Mm-hmm. But it's like, is Starbucks over it? Now they're just pumping out like ro- local Bay Area shit. But it almost in the sense, it's like San Diego where you like, you go to a Padres game, there is no chain shit in there. It's all local San Diego um, yeah. establishments, whether it's nice. Ale Smith, Ballast Point, you know, beers, uh, or like Cardiff. Um, oh my God, what's it called? Seaside Market. They oh, are like, in there. Yeah, Seaside yeah. Market has like because they're known for their food at the at mm-hmm. that re- at that um, grocery store. Mm-hmm. They have their shit there, and it's actually better at the Padres Stadium than it is at the actual Seaside wow. Market wow. in Cardiff. Because it's supposed to be like greasy, shitty food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You go to a baseball game, you're going to get greasy, shitty food. You go to Cardiff at the Seaside Market and it should it's be like, all organic. It's and- like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like not <laughs> shitty. And yeah. I'm like, this is what's the, what's the hype behind this sandwich? The Cardiff crack. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not good. But you go to the Padre Stadium, you get the Cardiff crack. It's like, yo, this shit's fire. <laughs> yeah. Yo, this shit's fire, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But either way, so what, like, aside from the bullshit that came with, that what did you learn most about for your next uh endeavors like are you guys looking on making another restaurant yeah we're um, so it's complicated a little bit but i'll make it fast so we actually came to california since the beginning to push the activity that we're doing now the pinza that is a very particular kind of pizza pizza. the pinza yeah it's a particular it's a particular technique of making pizza it's pizza at the end of the day uh, we had an, it always we wanted to do that, but at the same time, my passion for restaurants, my passion for Michelin type restaurants, it will bring me back in the kitchen. And what I really learned from this, it was to listen to myself three years ago, where I came here without knowing anything, and I had in my mind I have to get a super small shop, have a super tight staff that is actually doing everything that I am doing. And we run the show every night uh, in the most detailed situation. Like, there's no flaws of a restaurant. And when I say this, I mean, when you open a restaurant, there's so many factors. There's so many small things. There's be careful to the wine, be careful to the food cost, be careful to this, be careful to that. I wanted to do something much more set where I do only tasting menus. Well, mm. like the tasty menu I had in my Stozo yeah. on the card, I really wanted before opening my Stozo to open a restaurant that o- did only that, only the experience of a tasty menu. So you come in my Stozo. My Stozo is actually my last name. Yeah. I didn't want to put it in that restaurant in Hillcrest for the only reason that I couldn't do really what I wanted to do 100%. Now, the next time I will use that for a restaurant is... You're going at Maestoso, you're going at Marco Maestoso cooking your fucking food. Like, you come, you eat what I say, you do the tasting menu like I want you to do, I'll give you a great experience, and I promise you, you'll get out with a smile, but you do what I do when you come in to experience my experience. Yeah, you're only going to eat what you're, what you're offering. There's not like... Exactly. Yeah. There's no yeah. a huge menu. There's not, we're not, it's not a normal restaurant, a bar, whatever. It's an experience for food, 
where you actually, what I love and what I really think people loved about the tasting menu is I teach you, I, I, will, I will get you information on food. I will let you know how this should be, how this is done from scratch to your plate. And people love this. People love to be educated on food, mm -hmm. which is the biggest lack that we have in San Diego right now. I get so mad. You know why? I talk up shit so much. You talk so much I, shit, I, but I, that's I, what I, makes I, you I, you, bro. I know, like, I, know, I, know. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I mean, at, at least I can talk shit in my category, like in my profession. Yeah. I can talk shit about my profession because I know what I'm talking about. But it really is knowing what you're putting in your body, knowing what is the food that that's what make me angry most is people that just don't care about what they're eating mm -hmm. uh, people that don't care about uh restaurants give you so much shit so many restaurants give you so much shit is unbelievable and people seems like it, to me it looks from the outside it looks like people fucking close their eyes when they go out for dinner and they're like yeah just give me whatever and they actually even like it the whatever they give them it's that's the part I hate, and this comes only from ignorance in food culture, in food education. And where I come from, and I'm not saying Italy, I'm saying Europe, there's a huge food culture, there's a huge history behind, and sometimes, I mean, for people like me that come here, I mean, we notice this a lot, that there's a very big lack in education in food. And I'm not criticizing this, I'm saying I can't wait to bring education. I love to tell the people this is how it should be done and why it should be like that. Because mm. you buy a burger at McDonald's or you buy a burger at a fancy burger spot, there's a huge difference. Yeah, maybe even in the price, obviously, because there's quality behind. And again, quality is not fucking the good beef you're buying because it's grass-fed. No, that's not quality. The quality is the people that actually build that fucking burger for you mm -hmm. because they're putting their knowledge in every element that goes in that burger. The tomato is not a fucking frozen tomato that you bought at Cisco or whatever. Uh, the, 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 the meat, maybe they blend their meat theirself or they have a local meat provider or stuff like that. That makes quality. That... Uh, the word quality, oh my God, I hate it so much. It's like <laughs> fresh. I'm going to all these restaurants lately. We're eat fresh. Eat fresh. <laughs> They're like, oh, we, and we have this fresh snapper. And I always say, in opposition to what? Like, otherwise, if it was not a fresh snapper you wanted to sell me, what the fuck did you want it to sell me? A couple like day a, old yeah. snapper. <laughs> <laughs> the waiter coming to you, eh, this is six, day or six days old snapper. Hey, we're, about to, yeah. we're about to toss it out, but like yeah. special but on it. Right? it. Yeah. yeah, we could deep yeah. fry it for you. It's all good. All these words, we became so dependent on organic, on uh, gluten-free and this. And, well, gluten-free is a whole other That's world. a whole other yeah. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can talk for hours only about gluten-free, all this fucking people right now with this gluten <laughs> forgive that I feel shit. like gluten at least maybe being here so much in South Park I feel like the gluten thing has died down and now it's more vegan yes yes yes, yes which yes, yes, yes. yeah I that super agree. I wasn't so much like before I didn't know so much about what vegan was I just saw like the like the extremist vegans mm -hmm. but then when you like really boil it down it's like dude it's not that bad mm -hmm. like vegetables like oh, yeah. eating good shit you can make vegan food really good yeah please let me say this. Vegan, the problem with vegan is that it became a fucking religion. Mm -hmm. I hate religions, all of them, from yeah. the first to the last one. I Agreed. hate them all. Vegan is became like being an ta Islamic Taliban that wants to kill <laughs> every American. It's oh the same God. fucking shit. Vegan is normal. Like, I eat, mostly I eat vegan myself. I don't say it's vegan. It's broccoli that I'm boiling and I'm putting with lemon and salt and olive oil. I love it with the deep of my heart. You come in my house and you tell me, oh, you're eating vegan? I fucking throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I fucking throw it away. <laughs> I swear to God. I don't want this broccoli anymore. Dude, I'm fucking over it, bro. This shit sucks. <laughs> I, I had discussions with vegans and they're like, no, honey, man, we don't eat honey. Like, you piece of shit. You understand that honey and bees are the most important things we have on this planet. Dude, bees are super important. We would die as human beings. This is science. Yeah. I'm not talking Marco Mestos. I'm talking science. 
we would die with no bees. Every human would die with no bees. Because well, they pollinate. Absolutely. They fucking pollinate they, everything. It's the circle of life. Yeah. Like fucking the, lo, look at the fucking Lion King. It's the circle of life. Yeah. We have to keep it going. <laughs> it it's really is. Dude, like it really, dude, in China, they don't have no more bees or they don't have enough bees because they have these diseases. Have you heard about this? The bees are being like, uh, they're being deformed. Their wings aren't big enough. So they can't fly long enough to pollinate all day. Wow, so wow. in like China, they're, they're getting the pollen and they're pollinating on brushes to keep no, pollination right. still going. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. dude. Because it's mean, important. It's super fucking important. It's all synergy. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are all connected, like so interlinked. It's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And like for some reason, because humans are so like arrogant, but then at the same time, just like stupid. But then there's other factions of people who are like super care. Yeah. But it's like, why? I mean, this is kind of deeper. We're getting a, lot, a little off topic, but it's like, why do, why do humans think? Because we can just think complex and have like, because we're like the top of the food chain because we're so smart that we're above the rest of everything else on the nope. planet. Like we are all mm. interlinked, whether it's mm -hmm. human, whether it's a fucking tiger, a hippo or yep. a goddamn bee. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like That's the problem with climate change too. Dude. Just to say another one, it's the same problem. Obama himself, the last decent president that this country had, invested more than $2 million in a Kickstarter, his own money. He doesn't make a lot of money. He used to make 400 k a year when he was the fucking president of the United States. I yes. have friends that make more than that. And he invested $2 million of his money on a Kickstarter, which I invested too. It was called the Flow Hive. And y you bought this, this hive that it was super easy to do, even for normal people. You didn't have to be a beekeeper. You just put this thing, put the bees inside, and it will give you honey. It was like a fucking yeah, ATM. Awesome. It was like a little, fucking like ATM a of honey. And then when it was ready, you just open the tap, and then <laughs> and the honey the comes honey out. Honey just pours into sick. your jar, and then that's what? it. What? Yeah, yeah it was sick, amazing. Sick. And I invested too. I bought two of those motherfuckers. They're in Italy on my house on the lake. They have a couple of those machines there. And they, you really just open a tap, you get honey. But Obama himself invested in this American from Alabama. These guys invented this hive. He put $2 million in the Kickstarter. They were looking for 200. One day they woke up to Barack 200, Obama. 200,000? Like 200,000 or 200 million? 200,000 was their goal on Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh, One shit. One day they woke up to fucking Barack Obama gave you $2 million. Yeah. Bro, boom. come from, up. From there, <laughs> boom, it exploded all Damn. over the world. Damn, okay. Yeah. Dude, I'm that about cool. that. I just, it's so funny you're bringing the honey thing up because that is one thing I don't get. Like, as a V, like, I'm not a vegan, but like, I, I eat a lot of vegan food. I go across the street and eat the vegan burger almost, I'd say honestly, once, maybe two to three times a week. It's, it's nice. a lot. But I don't eat it because it's vegan. I eat it because it's fucking good. It's mm -hmm. a really good burger, and I'm like, oh, it's made out of beets. Beets yeah, clear you out. Whatever. Good. Yeah. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is the honey, I just, don't get I get the animals I get that that's fine you don't want to kill a pig you don't want to kill a fucking cow cool understandable mm -hmm. they're a living thing I get it you fucking are honey. eating honey it's a it's they discharge that shit right it's like exactly. essentially it's like shit it's essentially yeah. a bee mm -hmm. shit <laughs> but you're eating bee shit and it tastes so good to humans like yeah, yeah let's fucking eat it but it's like we are so interlinked with honey. It's fucking crazy. I don't understand. I like, I've been reading all this stuff about like the bees and the pollination and all this stuff. It's like, yo, we really need mm -hmm. to save the bees. Like yeah. I'm not yeah. about saving yeah. like a lot of shit, but like, yo, yeah. the bees are like really important, They're like really important. on yep. the real, we need yeah. the fucking bees. And for vegans, if vegans are listening, what would you do with your kid? Once you have a kid and you're a, a woman and you have to breastfeed, you're not gonna feed him because you're a fucking idiot vegan. Is that wait? That's is that really not a thing? Vegan. That's not. I talked to a person who didn't bra who didn't breastfeed. I wanted to punch her in her fucking face. Wait, because she's a vegan? Because she's vegan, she didn't breastfeed. You know what sense. happens? It, that that kid. They're not will, fully developed. No, it will come up crooked because of your <laughs> stupid fucking mentality. But what's the what's the reasoning behind that though? Yeah, that's because breast that's, breast. Um, I mean, I guess it's the same milk. reason behind why they wouldn't drink cow milk. Any milk right? is not vegan. But that's from an animal. But, but like, if you're naturally uh, producing milk, those nutrients that your baby needs, because you're yeah, another huh? human being. Absolutely. I'm, and this is not to throw shade. If you're if you're a vegan and you're getting pissed off, please relax. Like, uh, <laughs> this just is having like, fun. Yeah, but it's like that to me doesn't uh, make me, any sense care. at all. Like, pissed off. 
it's a known fact. If you're like, it's like if a cow was giving milk to its, to its calf, yeah. you need those nutrients to live, to breathe, to like grow up strong and healthy. Like that's why, I mean, mm-hmm. with that being said, I mean, that's why they say like, I mean, there's people who like formula versus natural breast milk. Oh, I've grew up fine. I was like formula. That's fine. But you're going to get the most nutrients and everything you need from the person who gave birth to yeah. you that you like had the bloodstream like going yeah. through you. I, that, that just does not make sense no. to me yeah, because if you grew in that enough. body, whatever your mother was eating <clears throat> or drinking, it's going 100% through your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I've, I've it, never heard it, that, honestly. Really like, I mean, I've sense. seen people who've done like vegan pregnancies, but like vegan, like them eating vegan and then giving their babies like vegan food, but not that they haven't breastfed. You, I mean, I've never actually, heard of that. Actually, you know the person. I unfortunately no. cannot say it, but you know yeah. the person, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess. Oh, dude, let me get your cup. Yeah, let me get your cup. You. This is uh, the hopster pot. You know the person. Anyways, wow, we went from pizza to yeah. breastfeeding. <laughs> breastfeeding. Yeah, well, once we get in veganism, you know, like veganism can just go out the door. Yep. Like, cause I, I have some like, I have a guest who's gonna be coming on, who's pretty heavy Thank vegan. You. But and it, sorry about the head on that. Um, but he's like this jacked ass dude, just like works out all the time, and he's like all plant based and stuff. It's like. Cool, man. I fucking mm-hmm. love it. And like, but again, no shade. And I have listeners who I know are like extremist vegans, but dude, fuck like vegan donuts, <laughs> vegan burgers, vegan, whatever. Like as long as it fucking tastes good. Right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all that matters. I don't care. Like mm-hmm. give me some fucking food that tastes good. We yep. good. Yeah. One and thing I personally really don't like is those, um, those vegan burgers that are like super popping right now. Like, uh, what oh, the impossible it? burgers. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I've never had one. I don't even know what they're called, but like the Beyond Meat stuff. Yeah. That I, shit freaks me out. It's bro. weird. Like Dude. I was I was super pumped. Like I saw this um the stand at this farmer's market and they do these like veggie burgers and it was I guess it was like this Beyond Meat thing. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm like, okay, cool. Like yeah, because I'm trying to eat less meat and, you know, yeah. I eat it every once in a while. I'm not vegan. I'm not a vegetarian. You know, I'm just, I'm just a whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm just a whatever I feel You're like just, eating yeah, person. Yeah, that exactly. day. Like, hey, maybe I want some like, greens today. I don't today. feel like chicken today, <laughs> so I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I tried one. I was, like, super pumped. I was telling him, I'm like, yes, I'm going to go get my burger. Like, I'll be, I'll be right back, okay? And, uh, and then I got this burger. I'm like, okay, 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 let's eat it. Let's do it. And uh, I took a bite, and then he took a bite, and we're just kind of looking at each other, and we're like, shit what are we eating this is really weird it's like yeah it's like Texture almost wise, like you're eating a burger wise. but then you it's like get a to the raw texture of, yeah yes it's like slimy and weird i just i don't know how to explain it honestly it was just weird okay have you been okay have you heard of like the meat um carne his name's dario um Something he's from Chianti. He has a he has yes a yes yes. He was on Chef's Table. Yes. Yeah, I don't remember his name, but yeah, it's Dario. Dario his his name is Dario, but I, I I don't know how to say his last name. But he's Italian. He doesn't speak English. And I went like me and my me and my wife. We went out to um, we were in Florence. We went out to Chianti. We rented a van. Went out there and we're like we're gonna go to his fucking restaurant. So we went out there. Really. And his whole thing is meat. You know, meat, meat, meat. He has a butcher <laughs> shop. He's a butcher. He said he's a butcher before he was a fucking chef. Mm-hmm. And you go in there and there's just this fucking meat. And the first fucking course that you get when you go sit there on this, like, and he has this, it's all, um, family style. Mm-hmm. Everything's family style. So you're sitting next to these people you've never met. And then you're just drinking all this shit loads of wine. And you know what I'm talking about? You guys both know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's like these tall ass things and they're like cylinders and they just like branch out and they yeah. have the, like that little. That damijana. That's damijana. Like damijana. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like <laughs> everybody's sharing wine. You're all like, ah, you know, it's hype. But, um. <laughs> They bring out the first course and it's raw beef, straight fucking raw beef, <laughs> a lemon and some olive oil. And I just remember, and like they have this, um, this salt stuff, like you just sprinkle it on and it's fucking mm-hmm. amazing. And then yeah. they have this, like you put the salt and the oil and like you dip your bread in it. And I'm just looking at this raw meat and I'm like, Oh fuck. Like, okay. Like <laughs> this like, is kind of gnarly. Like, like sliced really thin or no, no like, like a chunk it's of ground meat. beef and it's just a chunk and it's just there. And they're like, yo, eat this shit. <laughs> all right. Okay. And on the, on the thing, it says, uh, all the, all the beef is from Catalonia in Spain and it's all far, like raised beef, grass raised, but whatever, just like in his chef's table, he's walking around mm-hmm. with the cows and fucking take care of them. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm looking at this and I go to eat it and it was the best fucking th- mm. like raw meat I've ever had. It didn't even taste like raw meat. It was yeah. just like 
flavorful and full and then mm. it progressed and then you get to like the florentine steak and mm. like oh the god, raw meat aspect dude <laughs> oh god yeah that's a that the really raw meat aspect bone. and like really i've mm. never eaten meat so rare raw and rare because there was nothing even medium it was mm. all like that and it was just like but it was done so right mm-hmm. the reason i'm saying this is though is because that beyond meat shit we came back and um, my wife's friend, uh, Blair, she, shout out Blair, she always does this thing where like, she never tells my wife that she's coming to town. She'll hit me up first and be like, hey, I want to surprise Leslie. All right, cool. So we go to this dinner, we go to this like restaurant or whatever and uh, we, like, I don't know. We, we're just chilling. I order this fucking Beyond Burger or whatever. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this thing. And I remember, like, biting into it. And the first time I bit into it, it was like, this is like raw meat, but it's not good. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's like you bite into it and it's all like. Yep. Yeah. That's it's the reaction. So it's just slimy. fucking weird. Yeah. Like, gooey. Like, it's like gooey. That's it. Yeah. It's just, I think that's yeah. the word I was looking for. Gooey. gooey and fucking like. It's all chemical weird. proteins. It's I all don't get it. Gar- but what gum, I don't get, honestly, gum. is. And again, I'm like super. I'm not a. I don't. Uh, critical like Mr. My Sosa over here. Yeah. <laughs> I, every, you know, everybody can do whatever they want. But personally, like in my mind, when I think of it, you know, it's just like. I don't understand. If you're vegan and you don't want to eat meat then why do you want to eat something that looks and quote unquote tastes like meat? You know, it's like you shouldn't want to because that's literally against what you are. Dude. So like, why do they even invent these meats? Like you're vegan. Don't eat meat. Don't eat anything that looks or resembles or supposed to be meat. You know, dude, eat beets, eat lick lentils and chickpea burgers you which, know which are amazing way, which are amazing quinoa Those burgers. way better than impossible burgers oh my god like way i'd have i've had the way best better. quinoa burgers like insane and my in rome you had the best quinoa burger. oh yeah I'm we used to you. make those yeah. or like, there's even incredible. like fucking um i just found out what like a falafel is today it's like oh chickpeas and garbanzo yeah. beans like that's exactly a burger a vegan burger dude yeah. fuck it, that's what i'm saying like yeah. that's just delicious why do you have to fake the meat fucking eat a goddamn chick bur- chick yeah. bur- yeah. like chickpea burger like fuck those are amazing. Black bean burgers. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I fucking love them. Yep. Have you had the uh, black bean burger at um, Cafe Gratitude? It's amazing. I've never been there, but it's I've so had good. black bean burgers. The vegan burger across the street beats with fucking avocado, maybe a slice of cheese or just the way it is with like some buffalo sauce. <laughs> Fire Buffalo nice. Boot Dude It's so funny When I go over there I'm like yo Can I get a side of buffalo They're like Well we have the vegan buffalo sauce Or we have the regular <laughs> buffalo sauce I'm like let me get that Regular buffalo sauce I'm like yeah I'm but, enough with the vegan With the burger Yeah that's what I'm saying Like I yeah. don't know But dude I get cauliflower pizza Shit's fire I don't oh. know Like you don't need uh, like. A don't regular, start Marco on cauliflower oh, pizza Oh shit oh, man. Wrong <laughs> Wrong guy to talk about yeah. Alright <laughs> actually <laughs> re- Segue Segue We'll get off this Like this This no, fucking I'm you that, That's actually Our biggest competitor Right now in the market For it's the, the business cauliflower? That we're doing Is cauliflower foods Really It's a company Out of California I actually do like them They're a pretty cool company They're uh, They were really small They became huge They're selling million millions a year of cauliflower pizza they're doing great and the thing that in a little bit a little bit pisses me off is the same things that we're saying for our pizza they're saying for their pizza like it's uh, no gluten low gluten uh no whatever it's vegan they have dairy and their pizza no, we there, don't there's a, yeah there's isn't vegan. yeah there is not vegan it's vegetarian but like ours is actually vegan like our pizza is actually vegan and we i put a little bit of molasses in which came comes oh, nice. from the sugar cane uh so it's it's really really vegan but cauliflower and all this thing oh well my i God. think the, the, the whole point like, behind cauliflower you want pizza, a pizza is just fucking eat a pizza man Dude, I, what the fuck <laughs> cauliflower well that's like, that's you know for what? like people <clears throat> that with real you know with the like celiacs yeah yeah yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Like, like, i mean that's why they're not they're not meant to be vegan they're not they're meant not to be anything to they're just meant to be gluten free like okay, 100 they're not gluten-free. selling only to celiac people celiac people is oh, no, 0.6 of the whole world fucking population Seven billion dollars, seven billion, yeah, dollars. I wish seven billion people and 0.06 percent is celiac. 
So all these people saying, I'm, oh, no, no gluten for me. No, I don't eat gluten or I'm gluten free. It's all fucking bullshit, man. But no, wait, if there's 7 billion it? people, how much is 0. 0.06 is 7 billion? Is that like a, done my like a million before. people though, right? <laughs> no, is no, that no. like a lot? No, that would be much more. It will, No, no, it's not a lot. It's probably like, 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 like 200,000 people. Yeah, maybe. Is it really that low? 140,000 On the planet. People. Yeah. 140,000 people? It's actually 140,000 people. Yeah. Wow. On the whole planet are actually celiac. But celiac is a disease. Like if you're allergic to peanuts, mm -hmm. okay, you're yeah. allergic to peanuts. Fine, don't eat fucking peanuts. It doesn't mean we have to create a whole. There's no peanuts in my food, and yeah. everybody has to market that, that no peanuts in my food just because 0 0.05 of the population cannot eat peanuts. You cannot eat pizza. Fuck you. Sorry, man. <laughs> like I'm pretty sorry for you, <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't mean no. everybody else doesn't have to eat pizza. Like, yeah. Like yeah. let everybody eat what they can eat, like whatever. You just got to deal, bro. That's yeah. what's gonna happen. Well, I think th also the the other wave that they're riding is the whole keto, 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 keto. 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 Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, dude, it's funny. Is that that's what I was telling you about this beer, the the tread lightly or whatever. It's like, that's the keto thing from Thorn. Uh -huh. It's like the keto friendly beer that they have. It's like a Michelob mm. Ultra beer, but it's oh, like, okay. Mm. Is it? It's for like people who are like you know on their health. Low tip. carbs. Yeah, low carbs keeps you in a uh, ketosis yeah mm -hmm. so it's like but is that i mean is that even really still like a how thing how do you thing? make beer without grains though because keto is like no grain is it no, really yeah no carbs. like zero no it's it's low carbs but it's zero grain like if you look at um i have two two of my closest friends are doing keto diet right now and they've like said i was like oh maybe i'll try it and then i saw the list i'm like mm, maybe not uh but uh yeah it's there's no there's zero grains so there's no flour no rice no quinoa there's no no grains whatsoever well that's no, it, crazy because the hops <coughs> the yeah, hops yeah. are exactly grains. that's why yeah. it's strange no, 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 but, but it's not no grains at all keto is very low carbs that's it that's the whole keto thing because they have it's 4.5 well, alcohol it's just like a coors light but it's this one is 1.5 4.5 oh okay it's like 4. a Coors. that's what i was saying it's 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 just a little bit above a coors light but it's their version of like uh, the it's not really a michelob alter but it's their like lightest version because it's like mm -hmm. a they're um like a, uh, not a specialty coffee. What do you call that? Uh, yeah. The beer. What do you call the beer when it's like elevated? Craft. Oh, craft, craft beer. beer craft yeah. Machine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, I oh, fuck. I actually was talking to Dennis. Shout out Dennis. He, uh, I was talking to him about getting one of the head brewers on. So you know what? That'll be a good fucking question that I can ask yeah. him. Like, dude, tell me about this fucking beer. How does it, <laughs> how do you make beer with no grains? Tell yeah, me this exactly. right now. I mean, maybe it's just because like, Super what obviously low. what I looked at was the, um, you know how they do like the, sh the keto shopping list, you know, so it's like things you can shop, you can buy and what you can't buy. It's like meat and veggies, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. It's just like all proteins and then mm -hmm. all, well, not, not all veggies. I think there's some veggies that I, I'm no expert by any means. Yeah. Uh, disclaimer. <laughs> I'm not. No, I don't do keto. I'm. I. I'm like unable to do it. I'm like physically incapable. I keep asking my friends like, but what do I do? And they're like, just follow the freaking list. It's like, like, dude, that's way. But hard. how do I do that? It's like grains are just too big of me of what I am. Like I just yeah. there's no way. I'm like, but how do I not eat rice or how dude, do I rice not is eat so ever important. pasta? Yeah. All of the grains. But, pasta um, too. Yeah. What? That's like ingrained. In, not, not to be yeah. like. I hope this doesn't sound like stereotypical. But it's like it's ingrained in your guys' fucking blood. No, yeah. It's all of it. It's pasta. Yeah. We eat pasta. Yeah. Italians eat pasta one time a day. Every single day we eat pasta. But wait, okay. So then this is a good this is a good little segue. Mm -hmm. When I was in Italy this past uh fuck, I was in there May. In May. Mm -hmm. The pasta there is not like the pasta here. No. No. Dude, the fucking pasta there, you could eat like in the middle of the day. Me and my wife, we went. Had like, I had this amazing pasta. It was like lemon with fucking Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. And it was like, a, um, I don't know what kind of pasta. It was just like this stringy pasta, but it wasn't like the super spaghetti. It was like a Bugatini bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Bugatini. With like Bugatini. a hole inside. No, oh, like, okay. it was like stringy was like, like spaghetti, oh. but it was like wider. Okay. And it was very, very good. And, um, I ate it and I didn't have like a fucking nope. brick in my stomach. And yeah. we just went and walked around. And then like, I was thinking, Dude, if I eat pasta at night, like, yo, I'm pretty much good until the next day, like 10 mm -hmm. o'clock almost. We ate and then we walked around, went and saw some shit. And it's like, oh, let's go get some food. Like, yeah. And I was good. Yeah. It wasn't because I was on vacation. It was like, yo, I'm actually yeah. hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know what that is? Like, I've actually looked into this a lot. And this is kind of because uh, random. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> um, 
When I was little, my mom, she's a conference interpreter, and she worked with this. Um, a what? A conference interpreter. What does that mean? So she's she, a big ass. She's somebody. She's a big. That, yeah, yeah, she's a big conference interpreter. Yeah. She works with like all the American she presidents. She fucking all Obama, the, and now that bullshit. Oh, oh interpreter. Of Trump. Interpreter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah, what yeah. you said. Okay. She's okay. An interpreter. I said conference interpreter because I mean that's what they they do like a lot of conferences like you know. You know the movie The Interpreter? Yeah. Where there's this, like the interpreters in the booths on the top and then you have your earphones and you listen to them speaking. Yes, They're like yes. translating in your language. For like United Nations and shit. All that uh-huh. stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, So okay. she does that and then she also does like, you know, person to person so she works with like all the American presidents. Is that how your fucking president. English is so good? I guess, yeah. She's, okay, she's very, okay. she's a stickler on, on languages. Okay. If I like, when I'm speaking Italian, if I ever kind of like slang towards the Roman accent, she's like, don't do that. <laughs> Don't speak like so that. So she's a linguist. Yeah, she's a yeah. linguist. Dude, okay. that yeah, was yeah. the thing with me at the beginning. She was like, you can't He's say too bad Roman words. for you. You can't say bad <laughs> words with my mother. You can't talk slang with my mother. Like, you have yeah. to be a clean. Very like, proper. Like, very talk proper. properly. Yeah. Talk <laughs> Italian. Don't okay. talk, talk Roman because she doesn't like that. Yeah. But then um, I met her no, father, kidding. which is not... Yeah, fucking, my father's yeah. like a super it's Roman. <laughs> He's just this so chill. Yeah. In yeah. fact, my, my, my mom's like go-to phrases when I speak slang is like, you sound like your father. Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So she did this like big, huge conference. And again, this was like when I was really little. And so I always had this vague, vague memory in my mind, but I just never forgot it. And she told me this thing, um, and it was a conference about pasta. So I think, I can't remember if it was in Italy or in America, maybe in America, but they, they went around in like a lot of different, um, I don't know, importers, I don't know. Anyways, um, so they looked at what was actually in the pasta, and she told me, she explained to me that um, she was also surprised and shocked at how many things they pump into pasta, and this is legally required for you to import pasta from Italy to America you have to like enrich it with vitamins and like I don't even know because I, I don't know this stuff but Very if you true. look if you go to like say you go to the supermarket and you buy a pack Barilla. of Barilla pasta right it's like the most basic you know Italian pasta yeah. or whatever if you go to in Italy you'll you look at the ingredients and it's like I don't know flour water that's wheat it. that's it yeah. salt yeah salt <laughs> that's it you go to the American Barilla pack and there's flour, water, chemical, pro- protein, <laughs> xanthan like gum, yeah. xanthan gum. There's vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D, vitamin F, vitamin X, vitamin H, Y, Z. Like it's shit you can't crazy. pronounce. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, and, and I just, re- I have this memory and it's so, so strong in my mind how she's explained to me like, yeah, it's crazy how to import pasta in America, you have to enrich it because like, and it's all part of, The fact that in America, people's bodies are lacking certain like vitamins and certain nutrients. So they pump food with those nutrients and those vitamins. And that's why that's like the base of why Italian food is so much more pure and healthy for you. And just like makes you feel good as opposed to here, like literally everything you eat like me. Marco can tell you I'm so my stomach is so sensitive to food and Ever since I've lived in America, like, I always have a stomachache after I eat anything. Literally, I can eat boiled broccoli or I can eat a cheeseburger and I will always have a stomachache after I eat because there's just always stuff in the food. It's never 100% pure. Dude, that was the one thing when I was in Italy. We went out to Chianti, like I was telling you guys a second ago, and we did a cooking class. Or no, take that back. We were in Florence and we did a cooking class out in, like, the countryside before we went to Chianti. And the fucking use of olive oil yeah. out there is fucking yeah. ridiculous. And they were like <laughs> the lady who was cooking, like she had a translator, right? She only spoke Italian and she had like a couple words in English, but it was whatever. But then she had this like, um, did you ever see Aladdin? Yeah, like, yeah. like a gooseneck like, tea kettle, yeah, but yeah. like it looked like the fucking lamp the that the genie lamp. came out of, but it was full of olive oil. And she's yeah. like mm-hmm. making this bruschetta with a fucking like tomatoes and shit. Mm-hmm. And they're like pouring the olive oil and like we're all standing around looking at her cooking it. And then she's like, but then I do some more. And then it's like more <laughs> olive oil. And we're all just sitting there like I was like, what the fuck is this for real right now? But then the olive oil is so pure there. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it just like. They had this like bruschetta that was just super, super good. And then you toast it and they just scrape the butt, like the, uh, some mm-hmm. like a uh, mm-hmm. garlic and then olive oil on that. And then just a shitload of olive oil on all the tomatoes. <laughs> and then you eat it and it's like, yep. 
an orgasm in your mm-hmm. mouth and like then they give you this red wine this chianti wine and it's like mm-hmm. yo like heaven exists on planet yeah. earth yo and it's right here and you go out and you look onto these fucking mm-hmm. open these like valleys of just beauty mm-hmm what the fuck? Yeah. Why? why are you leaving this? Place? Why did you guys leave that place? Like, why are you here? Like, uh, that's a good con- yeah. That's a good question. That's a, a good uh, question that we get asked every single yeah. day of our lives. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. Italy is not really that kind of third world country where you run away from, but it, it really is but not. It's but close. It's, it's, but it's close. It, it's, it's close just because of Italians. Uh, uh. That's the thing I hate the most of my country is the fucking people. They don't give a fuck. It's simply we ruined that country very very simple to or like our political economical well it's very uh, it's it relates to us very like the leader wise right uh, right now yes yeah in this in the last four years yes yeah I've, I've, when i looked at when i look at donald trump i'm not afraid to say it i see italy in the last 25 years with the fucking idiot that it's so stupid and you put him as a dictator of the country and he decides whatever you're going to do and this is when the country goes to shit yeah and when if trump disrespects women every single fucking one in america and maybe we can say you and me know but it doesn't matter the majority of people would disrespect women if he talks shit about black people about mexican people like that's the mentality that is going to go on in the country yeah and unfortunately, uh, this is what happened in the last 30 years in Italy, and this is what I'm seeing now. Thank God you guys have the thing every four years, you change the president, and I swear to God, if he wins again, you're all fucking retards. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to, I have to say that, like, there's no chance, like, in my mind, there's no chance, but I look at, I get informed on the web, and what I'm seeing is he's still pretty big and like he could get well it's a big country re-elected. bro we're on one side yeah. of it you that's know true. Like, very <laughs> small side like, of yeah. it the <laughs> idea that he gets reelected after all the shit he's done like, like we don't need any more proof like he's bro, giving shit to everybody and does, everything just, just you can't even like, watch the news bro like yeah. you just can't even like no, dude like, I walked across the street to go get some liquor for a podcast that was like a couple weeks ago whenever it happened that he got impeached or whatever mm-hmm. or if he did get yeah. impeached no, but I was know. like I fucking was buying beer because I didn't have a chance to go over to Thorn. <laughs> and I buy beer and I'm like, I was sitting there. And all of a sudden I hear on the TV, President Trump is going to be impeached. And I like yeah. turned around and I was looking at it. And I was like, what in the fuck yeah. is going on in the country right now? I, yeah. I do not look at news. I will not. Be, I'm like, no, fuck that. I, like, I look, concentrate what's on going on here. But dude, there was a guy who was like, and I shit you not, he was extremely offended. Because mm-hmm. I looked at the dude behind the counter and I was like, is that for real? Is that happening right now? And he looked at me. He was like, yeah, that's happening right now, bro. I was like, President Trump's getting impeached. I was like, whoa. And the dude behind me was like, <laughs> like, I, like I was the asshole because I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, bro, are you kidding me? All the negative shit that's going on in this world. Like, I, don't, I don't have time for negative shit in my yeah. life. News or people that I surround myself with. So yo, if you're talking negative shit, get the fuck away from mm-hmm. me. Honestly, yeah. I tell people, I've told people like, yo, get the fuck away from me. Mm-hmm. Regardless, <clears throat> that's just, dude, you can't concern yourself with that shit, bro. No. Like, because no, no. on the, on the scheme <clears throat> of things, like who are we really, you know, like mm-hmm. what are we really doing? Like, is this really going to affect us? Some shit that's going on, unless a bomb fucking drops on us, God mm-hmm. forbid. Then if that were to happen, then I'd be like, yo, fuck whoever that person is. Mm-hmm. But yo, we're, we're working in the coffee shop. You're working in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You're doing a damn thing. Fuck yep, it, dude. We can't we lose, fuck it. Just go over. vote. That's all I say. Just go vote. Make the yep. difference that way. Even if you don't believe in it, fuck it. Just mm-hmm. go vote. Yep. But I mean, besides going back to the why we don't live in Italy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> Stepping away from politics. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, be please. Switzerland here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, cool. I mean, yes, you can like bring it, boil it down to like politics and the economy and whatever. But at the end of the day, for me, the way I look at it, because I don't really care too much about politics because it's just such a shit show that I'm exactly. just like, I can't even be bothered. Yeah. Um, for me, what the biggest problem in Italy is, is just the lack of opportunity and mm. the lack of confidence that the country has in young people. In fact, the biggest issue right now in Italy is, um, I don't know, I don't know the right word to say it in English, but the uh, brain the people that go outside you know how the, the country. There's a word. The people that the, run away the from the country. The young people that are escaping from the country. It's like a brain 
They call it uh, brain escape. It's so funny. Brain escape you, escape you, or something. you you speak such good English. So when you're saying, I don't know how to say it, in yeah. English, like, what do you mean? You're speaking <laughs> English fine. Like, uh, yeah, like, like in, branching out. Mm-hmm. Like in there's, Italian, there's a specific is phrase. la fuga dei cervelli, yeah. which is the escape of the brains, yeah. which means the good people. So they're op- an open mind. Open mind. Yeah. So like the, the people that, that are educated. So the young people that actually manage to finish university, because that's a whole other discussion right there. Um, so the, the people that actually graduate, the people that want to do something with their lives and like have ambitions and all of that, they get out of the country. As soon as they graduate, they're out because there's like no jobs in Italy. There's, it's so hard to do anything. Like if you are like there's us. There's a lobby like in a, every work. Lobby. Yeah. A lobby? Lo- like lobby. a lobbyist? Uh, no, no lobby. Uh, unions. <clears throat> Oh, unions. Yeah. But n- not that. It's just the fact that, like, the there's union. just not... The union, <coughs> if you say union in America, is much, much different. Like, the, the union is something pretty organized. In Italy, it's more like a lobby. Like, the old people need to stay in their jobs. Like, you can't fire people. In my high So they're school, tenured. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, under, they call it undetermined job, which means you'll have your job forever. So my professor that teach English in high school, she studies history for her life to get a job she got a job as an english professor this is why nobody knows fucking english in italy because there's no real people teaching english there's no people that know english to teach english to young people it's just people that got the job and they're gonna hang to their job and you cannot fire them there's no way to get them out of there but this is in every work when i went to rome though specifically in rome they have such a good coffee scene there uh, oh, Rascoli's. Awesome. Uh, Rosciolli. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> really close. Oh, what is it? Rosciolli. Rosciolli. Yeah. Dude, amazing coffee there. Yeah. And they have like the pastries in the fucking, di- like in the, the, yeah. the cases or whatever. I'm friends with the guy. He His pizza is fucking amazing. Dude, they, there's a guy, I remember specifically, we were going over to like the Coliseum or Coliseo or whatever. We're yeah. fucking walking over there. I'm like, I, I looked up coffee stuff and I went there and I went up to the guy and I was like, uh, how do you say hello? Oh, sorry. Ciao. 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 You know, like, how's it going? And I was like, due espresso, por favore. And he looked at me. He's like, what language do you speak? <laughs> and I was like, I thought I spoke Italian. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, like I, I was really trying to, like, just respect, you know? And he's like, do you speak Espanol? I was like, see. Sí. And he was like, and he asked me, he's like, do you prefer to speak in English, Spanish, or Italian? And he's like, what do you want to speak in? French? And he's like, I, any language you want. I got it. And I, that's exactly what he said to me. Nice. And I was like. I thought I spoke Italian. I'm just like, fuck it, you speak English. But he knew it. And then everywhere I went, with the exception of the Tram Depot in Rome, that was the only place that I went in all of Rome that didn't speak any English. Because we went pretty off the beaten path to go to the Tram Depot. And the dude there, they like, I walked up to the front and they fucking were not having it. And I was just like, you know, ciao, due espresso, por favore. And the lady looked at me and she just kind of like rolled her eyes and I was like, fuck, am I like saying it that bad? Like, I feel like I was saying it right. But it, it just kind of like, I don't know. But every coffee place that I went to, my <laughs> point is every coffee place that I went to, it was all chill. Like everybody yeah. spoke yeah. English, which was, uh, is that just because uh, of the tourists? Yeah. There's, there's, there's the so tourists. much tourism yes. right now. <clears throat> like, yeah, uh, for sure. It's, um, it's mm-hmm. the whole like, People speaking English thing has They're improved kind of a lot it. in the past few years. Uh, it wasn't always like that. Um, and mostly it was like that, like it's strictly in the city center, like in the uh, historical center. Because mm-hmm. there's a city center and then there's his historical center, which is even smaller. It's like three kilometers by three kilometers. It's literally like, what's three kilometers? I don't know, seven miles? No, five miles. Five, five miles by five miles. It's tiny. So it's okay. all where all the monuments are. So it's like the radius yeah. of, you know, the Colosseum to Piazza del Popolo. I don't know if you know that, if you saw that. I Probably did. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like the Vatican to whatever. We actually did not go to the Vatican. And people no. were like tripping that we didn't go. I was like, <laughs> dude, I, I don't believe in religion and mm-hmm. I don't want to support religion. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I mm-hmm. just, I, I personally, yeah. for I me, you. I grew up in a Mexican household. And I don't know if you guys know about Mexican households, but like. Mm-hmm. Very religious. Usually. Very religious. Very Catholic very like pope like yo you father son holy ghost on man yeah. like yo this is what we doing like my grandmother is 93 years old and she still prays like i don't pray like every now and then i'll shoot up a prayer to the big man and be like yo what's good g how you doing <laughs> but like if grandma says we're gonna pray i'll pray but i don't believe in that and just with like i feel like because of like the internet and everything that's going on now it's like 
that shit is so crazy. And I remember talking to a homie and he's like, dude, if you don't believe in religion, fine, whatever, just go to the Vatican and see it because I have the most art in the world. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's like, it's just to see it. You know, it's it's just, it's just so beautiful. It's incredible. I mean, I grew up my whole entire life in Rome and now still after 31 years, every single time I drive by, I'm just like, wow. Breathtaking. Yeah. See, that's the thing is like when I, to that point is like when I fucking, when I know what's behind it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of what is available for information wise and then what you just see from over the years, even if you don't look at the internet about it, it's like, yo, I just I can't fuck with that. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. personally, yeah, mor- like that. morally, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about no Vatican. Yeah. Like, yo, whatever. Like and I'm not trying to throw shade for anybody who's listening to this. Like if you disagree, I'm sorry. Like that's just me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So when we went to oh, Rome, I, mean, if you I go would go to Rome. You can go to see it, but, but I would rather go see the pagan. Like yeah. the fucking, like when you go and they keep uncovering all this shit and they still haven't got to the original ground floor of mm-hmm. what Rome used to be. And you see these pillars and these fucking marble things that yeah. have just stood the test of time. They got buried and they unburied them and they're still standing. Like yeah. what that's, in the fuck, yeah. you know? And then you see the, like the battle that went down at one point. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you could go back in time and be a fly on the wall and just see what really happened between like that because what's crazy is that religion affected what we see as like the a timeline of where we are as a civilization because they say like the fall of rome was at like what 400 ad AD, but there was how many thousands of years before that where like the pagans and like they have all these reenactments or photos of like what had happened and all the gods and all these things and it's like to me that's way more interesting it's like dude what the fuck like this is so sick and then but then you also have like the mini arc de triumphs like that those things i didn't even know until i was there those are like murder fucking uh shrines Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. you killed 5,000 people, you get this baby ass little Arctic yeah. Triumph. You killed like 30,000 people, you get this big ass one. It's like, yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. I was taking a tour. I was like, that, is that for real? And it's she was like, like yeah. Followers I was like, now. You got oh, 100,000 100, followers on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, you get this plaque. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's what I'm Arctic saying. Shit. <laughs> the, yeah, Arctic Triumph. Like, we didn't change that much. Dude, it's <laughs> fucking bonkers. Yeah. And to me, as a history person, like when I went to college the first time, I was a history major. That's what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a history teacher. Still love it. But to like see the Romans and see all this shit. And then you like, well, even when you're walking to the Colosseum and you see the center of Rome and they have that huge erected, like looks like an Arc de Triumph, but it has all these crazy statues and everything. I'm just like, this is the shit that I wanted to see mm-hmm. with my yeah. own eyes. Like, wow. Yeah. Civilization as we know it. Like this is where it like, started. It Pretty started much. Yeah. year yeah. one. Like this is fucking it right here. Yeah. You know? And yeah. we really didn't change much. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. We Which is so a good sick. thing and a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but anyways, anyway, so we got like super anyways. far from the points. But yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I want to talk about. So the restaurant closed. Mm-hmm. You guys are on a hiatus right now. But what's, what's down the pipeline? What's popping? Like what's really going right. good? So one of the main things we were already starting when we had the restaurant it was this business on um, pizza. Uh, since I started, I put myself as a warrior, a soldier going on a war against pizza, which is one of the most crazy wars that I will ever do in my life. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm in. So we got it. into it on depth yeah. in the last one. <laughs> I'm in, so I'm, I'm going to finish it. But anyways, like the way we eat pizza, the way we process pizza, which for me is the most important, the way that people just think about pizza, I don't like it. I, I know it's wrong and I wanna kinda educate even people on this. And the making of pizza, so what Maestoso Foods is all about right now. Uh, well, well, that's, a, so you're starting Maestoso Foods. Yeah, that yeah. actually started uh, eight months ago uh, when the restaurant was already open. Uh, we were producing these bases from the restaurant and these bases are bases of pizza. Uh, or uh, flatbread. The pe- a lot of people call it flatbread, and I'm okay. I don't like it to call. I don't like to call it flatbread because of what kind of flatbreads I see around. I'm pretty pissed when they say flatbread. But to make you understand, that's what it looks like. It looks like a flatbread, and what we're producing is actually this bread dough, this pizza dough, this flatbread dough, however you want to call it. 
which is the right way of making pizza, which is the right way of making bread. It has a 90% uh, content of hydration, so it means water. Okay. So n for 90% of the dough that you're eating is water. Um, nice. The rest of it is 17 different grains from Rome. Uh, south of Rome, there's a town called Frosinone. And from Frosinone, we get this flour, which they make it just for me because I gave them a little recipe of how I wanted it to be. And there's rice flour inside. There's another 16 different types of ancient grains, which now it's becoming the fancy thing to say I have ancient grains. But anyways, it's a mix of flours, uh, which I almost shouldn't say this, but fuck it. Uh, at the border, we cannot say all of that, the things that are in there because the FDA in America will actually kind of stop it. But they ship to me my recipe, the mix of grains that I really want with the rice, with a little bit of soy, which is, is GMO and all the shit because soy, people get so scared about soy in America because soy in America, it does really fucking suck. Yeah, it fucks you up because the, it, the it estrogen really does in it. fuck you suck. Yes, yeah. it fucks you up. But the soy in Italy, the way they process it, it's totally different. So there is a mix of soy, rice, and 16 different kind of flour from Italy, of grain from Italy, ancient grains. And I get it shipped here, and I produce this base, this pizza base, which is 90% water. It's a natural fermentation. It takes 72 hours at least to do. This is another thing. When pizzerias tell you 72 hours of proofing, that's kind of weird. Like every dough that I make, every day I make a dough, it depends on him. He's ready when he's ready. Yes, it goes between 60 <laughs> hours and 100 hours. Let's say it's 72. You did like 120 mm. at my I did 122, yeah. yeah. It depends. It depends on the dough. Like, it all depends, actually, honestly, technically, is the temperature that we're working it on. Like, if I really can keep that dough very cold, because imagine when I put the flour and the water and everything in a dough machine, the dough machine is working and it's beating it very fast, very hard. It heats up just because of the movement, just because of the contraction of all the proteins and carbs and all the shit mm -hmm. it heat up he heats up so i use ice water then i do my dough in the walk-in so i'm in a, an a ambient, controlled environment a with controlled temperature environment. stuff yeah exactly so i keep the temperature really always down so that i can put a lot of water in my dough i can put a lot of like low temperature so that i can work the dough longer it doesn't heat up as fast as a normal dough and I can actually develop this bread, this flatbread, this pizza, this whatever the fuck you want to call it, mm -hmm. that is the healthiest pizza dough, that is the healthiest piece of bread you're going to have all over the world. It's crazy to say, but it's all over the world. Yeah, you don't hear that a lot. <clears throat> a healthy no. piece of bread. Yeah. <laughs> <A healthy laughs> pizza, exactly. It's a healthy exactly. piece of bread. And this is the way we're selling it right now because this is really the most, the biggest, uh, the biggest prop, the biggest thing that it, this bread has. And yeah. We already got many clients in San Diego. I got a client that actually opened a restaurant only with our pizza dough. So they opened the pizzeria and they buy the pizza just for me. So it's like if I open the fucking pizzeria <coughs> in a way, Damn, pretty stressful. Up. It's a wholesale yeah. account. Yeah, yeah, it's a wholesale account. And they open this pizzeria with only my bread because they love it. And plus, this is a big plus for how things are going in San Diego. Uh, you don't pay the labor of an actually expert pizza dough making the pizza at your restaurant. You just buy my fucking pizza and you put a whatever dude, put in the toppings on top, put it in the oven and just give it to you cuts on labor, which, which is unfortunately one of the biggest things happening in 2020 in San Diego, labor cost. Like we just went to $13 an hour minimum wage in the restaurant. It's kind of crazy. It's pretty high uh, for restaurants. I really understand it's high for restaurants. I understand it's not really that high for people working because $13 an hour, if we face it, not making a lot of money at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. like. We always discuss this when we were in the restaurant business. Like, oh, yeah, we're paying this guy $15 an hour, $16 an hour. Oh, shit, that's too much. But then you actually look at his salary at the end of the year. It's like 25, 30 grand yeah, it's a like year. Yeah, it's like 30 grand maybe. It's mm. fucking maybe, nothing. Dude. Like, if I think about my rent and my house is 
$2,500 for 12 months. It's, it's almost 50 fucking grand just Dude, for my he, rent if, in my yeah, house. Yeah, it's like 24 grand at least, yeah. if not more oh, than the fucking... Months, sorry, yeah. It's like 27 grand. My, just my rent in Dude, my house is 27 grand. If you grand, make it 30K, so. that means... Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, dude, what? 90-something percent survive. of your fucking money is going to rent? Like, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And restaurant owners look at it that way, but people obviously don't because they're like, dude, I'm paying like $20,000 of rent a month. How can I live if you give me 30 grand a month, a yeah. year? A year, yeah. O- obviously, it, it doesn't work out. And the fact that minimum wage is going out, is, is going up, it's kind of killing restaurants in a way because, again, restaurants look at the scent on everything from labor to food to everything. And our product, in a way, kind of helps labor costs. It, it, it really does help labor costs a lot because we're giving you the ready shit. You just put your toppings on top, stick it three minutes in the oven, and you So you're making it. like a ready-made pizza, it's essentially. It's a ready-made mm-hmm. pizza, yes. At the end of the day, is that's it what it is. Is it still your uh, uh, unique flavors, though? Because like, I remember going to the, my the, the restaurant, and it was like figs and other things that were on the, re- on the pizza. Oh, the toppings that, on top. The toppings, yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. that just, yeah, that yeah. really depends. I mean, we, mm. give you the, we give you the base, um, and then just the, the toppings, dough? the, just the dough. <coughs> oh, just the so dough. The okay. Cr- the literally the crust. Okay. And then you're putting whatever <laughs> toppings that you want. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, you know, if, if you do need some sort of, um, like menu development this service, what, we do that as well. This is what Buttery. my flyer says. Like our chef is, av- our chef is fucking me. Our <laughs> chef is fucking me. <clears throat> He's available for menu development <laughs> services. Like I love to work with the people that I sell the pizza with. Yeah. And I'm like, dude. Send me your menu and let's talk about it. You can critique it. Yes. I can consult ad- adjust almost. It, adjust yeah. it. Yeah. So I like if, you know, if they don't have it. anybody in there, like say, for example, a, a I don't know, a, a pub open, you know, gets a bar, our, a bar op- uh, gets our pin says, but they don't have a chef in a pub. Or a bar or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a pub British in Europe I mean, it's pub. Yeah. Well depend like that's actually like bi coastal. Because if you're mm-hmm. in Boston, in Boston they require if you are selling alcohol, you have to have food at your pub. Mm-hmm. And so they have like extreme fucking really good food in like just hole in the wall yeah. fucking pubs. Yeah. Random yeah. pubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. here it would be like a bar and grill. Okay. But yeah. do you okay, call yeah. it a pub here? In no. San Diego, no. I right? mean, unless it's, it's an Irish thing. If yeah. it's yeah. an Irish thing, it's a pub. If it's like yeah. a, just a bar, like it's a bar and grill. Mm-hmm. Like that's probably. Yeah, because that's the difference between Europe and America. Like when we say bar in Europe, we mean a coffee shop. Yeah, in, straightforward. In Italy, we a bar is a coffee, a coffee shop. shop. Straightforward. Oh, wow. Like where you yeah, go, it's you're a cultural difference right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Where you go it in was, the morning to take your coffee. When we got here, that's a bar. You go in the morning, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., you get your coffee, you get the fuck out. That's a bar. <laughs> a pub is where I go hang out, drink my beer, have my whatever dinner. Uh, that's a pub. But here, really? in, we had to, uh, like us, we had to adjust to this adjust, yeah. coming here. Like, like we would tell people at the beginning, like, hey, oh, I've been like to that bar. You know, nine like, in oh, the morning, like, hey, drink? let's meet at the bar. <laughs> Like, They're like, what? what? The <laughs> like, what do you mean? It's not, yeah, it's like you guys are <laughs> intense right open. now. Yeah. Wait, are you watching a soccer match right now? Like a, a football <laughs> match? Like, fuck no. Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. But, that's, but see, that's the thing, though. Unless you've been to Rome specifically or even Italy in general. Like, I, I didn't really experience this in Florence so much, but it was specifically Rome. It was like almost every spot that I went to in Rome. And it's like if you're in coffee, being that's what I do. I'm inspired by the Italian culture, but I didn't know. I knew how to make the drinks. I did not know about the Italian coffee bar experience where Mm -hmm. you fucking walk in. uh, I was uh, by the Pantheon and there was a Cafe del Toro. uh, Cafe del Toro Taza or something like that. I don't remember. It was like something. Tazza Tazza Doro. Tazza Doro. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Okay, thank you, thank you. But the one right there by the Pantheon and you, you pay the dude up the front and then you go up to the bar and it's like you show them your receipt and they give you espresso and people just take it and leave. Mm-hmm. It's like That's working it. in coffee here. People come that you don't pay extra to sit. Yeah. You fucking come here. You have your coffee. Some people take it to go. Some people chill in Italy. You, if you were going to sit right. down, you well, that same pay drink, me, you have to pay more. Yeah. yeah. You have to and pay me, man. To yeah. You have to pay me to sit here. If mm-hmm. not, you have to find, and it was funny. I was like, I was standing there with my wife and I was like, okay, from what I understand, <laughs> uh, Ross, uh, say it again, please. What? Rascoli. Uh, Rascioli. 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 <laughs> yeah. 
Rasoles. They, if there's no spice at the bar, you, you stand behind the people and you just wait. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. then they're going to fucking dip. And as soon as they dip, you just walk up. Yep. And then you take a shit and you leave. It's like, wow. That, it's not just the coffee that has inspired the rest of the world. But it's like what, but something that has, has skipped that and has kind of been culturally different is the experience of how you enjoy the coffee shop and Mm -hmm. and here in America, especially it's like that, that shit don't fly here. Yeah. Which is kind of sad in a sense because Mm -hmm. it's, it really does give it more of that bar feel where like, Mm -hmm. if I'm going to go to a bar here, I'm gonna have a drink. I'm gonna have a drink. I'm Mm -hmm. gonna fucking get the fuck out there. It's like you drink your espresso, you get the fuck out and boom, Mm -hmm. you go to Spain, you go to fucking Italy. That's where people are like, I'm going to have my beer. I'm going to chill. Yeah, maybe the middle of the it. day, hang out, see the homies. Mm-hmm. But see, that's, that's not how a it bar. is with coffee bars mm-hmm. here. Coffee in the morning is like, dude, people are like meeting for coffee, talking for a couple hours, have another cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Like that's why almost, Better Buzz is so big. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Better Buzz. Opens, Better Buzz, Bird Rock. locations. Yeah. Bird Rock, yeah. Same shit. I actually get so mad at Bird Rock when I go like, I went in San Francisco in one of them. And the guy was smelling my espresso. You mean blue bottle? No, a blue bottle. Blue bottle. Yeah, yeah, blue yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, I remember yes. you telling me about this. Like, what the fuck this. are you doing? Yes. You're smelling it. Give me a fucking I another one. God, yeah. I almost, almost never get that. I never got that <laughs> mad to somebody in the restaurant business. Like this motherfucker, I'm like an espresso and I see him. Wasn't it that took in, him, the, in OC? No, no, no. That was San Francisco in Mint Plaza. I remember mm. exactly where it is. The blue bottle in Mint Plaza. Shout out, negative shout out to the <laughs> blue bottle in Men Plaza <laughs> and negative some shout out. that's a dislike button right yeah. there <laughs> so I go there in the morning and I'm like I order an espresso I swear to fucking my mother 27 minutes after I see this guy making my espresso and I'm like dude I have to fucking work I don't know what you're doing but I have to work and he gives me my espresso and before he gives it to me he's melted with his nose like this close to his nose he puts it in and then he gives it to me I'm like dude <laughs> What the fuck? What did you just do? He's like, well, I don't know. He's, uh, I'm checking that everything is okay. And they're all dressed with a little like Sicilian hat and all the aprons and everybody's clean. And everybody, there's five people making a fucking express, espresso. And he gives it to me. I'm like, dude, you put your nose in your, my fucking espresso. Do it again. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? You put your nose in my espresso. Give me a fucking shot again. See, that, that, like, I, and the, I have to go. So do it now. <laughs> I think about that shit all the time. I'm not going to lie, Marco. <clears throat> I literally, since you told me that the first time, because every morning I make a pour over and I smell it. Like mm-hmm. when I do them, like <laughs> I smell it. But then I mm-hmm. always hear like, what the fuck are you doing? Like you're smelling <laughs> the pour over. And then I'm like. But the thing is, is like in the morning when it's my own, I'll mm-hmm. smell it. I'm exactly. not going to smell a fucking pour over that I'm serving exactly. to a customer. Yeah. Yeah. Let but me give you also- another example. I'm a chef. When I give you a plate of pasta, I will taste it. But you don't know I tasted it. Of course. You do like, that shit behind the I scenes. I do it when like, it's in the on. pan. <laughs> when it's in the pan on top of the fire, I'm like, let me taste it so it's okay. Okay, that's fine. You will never fucking know. I tasted your pasta. I give you your pillow pasta. I don't come at the table and fucking take the fork. I'm like, dude, wait a second. Yeah. Let me take a fork of your yeah. pasta. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is that, that's what my point is. Like when you do, like that's what we call dialing in in coffee. Like when you're in the morning, you have to dial in the fucking espresso. Mm-hmm. And whether whoever's, whether it's Leov, whether it's fucking Ryan, whether Josh, shout out to all my fucking team at Seven Seas. I always say like, yo, let me get a shot. As the roaster, I want to make sure that it's dialing in. And they're like, okay, hey, what was it dialing at yesterday? Okay. And then you look at the days that it's like, you know, it's been sitting for five days or six days, X, Y, Z. Yesterday it was pulling at 27. Okay, 27 was good. So let's pull it. And then we pull it. I fucking swirl it around. I smell it. I fucking taste it. I'm like, all right, good. This is good. We're going to we adjust through the day. But those things you do on your own. Mm-hmm. When the customer asks, you know that that's where the, the fucking mm-hmm. point is. 27 seconds. For today is where it needs to be. And then you can have a, a range. You do a couple, like the 27 seconds, 29 seconds. But no, at any point, am I going to grab a fucking shot of espresso and then be like, <laughs> you ordered a shot of espresso, it. right? It's on the bar. Yeah. yeah. Smell it and be like, <laughs> like yeah, okay, th- there it goes. Like, I'd be like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? That's why when the first time you told me that, I was like, that guy must have been a newbie or something yeah. because like yep. that just doesn't make sense to me. And especially in San Francisco where – I was again before this. I was having with um, I was having lunch with a friend at Wholesome, and I was talking to her. She's from the Bay Area too, and 
she was like, specialty coffee has been big there forever. And that's as a Bay, Bay area person, specialty coffee has always been big there. San Diego coming here. It's like, it's up and coming and it's definitely developing right now. And it's like, mm. it's about to be on the forefront of like on the level of San Francisco, if not mm-hmm. better. And, um, I think you just, better. you just don't, you just don't do that. I just don't understand. Like, no. why would that motherfucker do no. that? <laughs> what are you doing G? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Somebody didn't train you right. Like, yo, really? come on, man. Really? Like, but damn, he wanted to look more professional. Yeah. Like, like no, you look stupid. Person. Like, yo, stupid. Yeah. Hey, Hey, you, you know the vibes. You know the, that's not that shit don't fly here, son. Like, come on now. <laughs> this brings me to the only two times I really got mad in this country. Even if I personally get mad a lot, but in, no, in this you spot, think so? <laughs> no, no. Nah. you're kind, bro. You're kind. <laughs> in this spot, it was them in San Francisco and here in San Diego, in actually in Carlsbad. A juniper, no, not juniper and ivy. That sucks too, but whatever. What? And, yeah, oh, and damn. I really don't like that place. Really? I really? No, it's overhyped like crazy. I love Richard they, Blaze though. They, I might have to disagree with you <clears> on that. Richard <laughs> Blaze is never there. Dude, okay. Never I went when there. it first opened and he was there. At the beginning. Like At this is seven yeah. years ago though. Six oh, or seven fuck. years ago. Dude, don't date He's me right now. He's never there. <laughs> you're dating <laughs> me right now. There. Okay, okay, go ahead. Anyway, so you're, <laughs> talking, you're talking about June yeah. and Jolie. I am talking about June and Jolie, which is the most upcoming restaurant in San Diego, which is the most hyped, which is What's the one. What's it called? Ju- uh, June and Jolie. Is June Car- and Jolie? Yeah. yeah. It's in Where Carlsbad. is this at? Oh, in Carlsbad. Carlsbad. Okay, okay, okay. It's the most hyped restaurant for now, and it's the one that everybody says, oh, Addison got one star. They should have got two because they have to give one to June and Jolie. Dear June and Julie, come to fucking Europe and you get under five stars, minus five stars, because your menu fucking sucks. I did the tasting menu, it was six of us. I'm not the one that sends back food to the kitchen. A fucking American guy that we were there with, he's like, dude, this shit sucks. Get it back. And these are the contesters for the Michelin star. This is what I criticize about San Diego. But anyways, the, the, the plate I got most really pissed on it was the desserts okay the dessert they gave me a vanilla ice cream with a slice of canta- she was there was she it didn't. homemade though <clears throat> nope wait a no. second <laughs> wait a second they said oh, yeah. it was homemade and it was they're up for a Michelin homemade. star yeah they are oh. they will they will be i swear to god we really record this very well they will get <laughs> they will get the Michelin star this year because they're the most hyped they spend the most on marketing of all of San Diego. They will get the Michelin star this year. Wow. And I will be pissed. In November, I hope I can come again and say, did you see the motherfuckers <laughs> got <laughs> the Michelin stars? You? The piece of shit? <laughs> so <laughs> I go to June and Julie and I told this to the manager after months. I talked to the manager and I told them, man, I had the worst experience I ever had in my life with the tasting menu at your restaurant. Wow. Not in fucking. You said that? New York. I told them. I know I told you them did, but face. like, damn, son. I told them in his face. I know. <laughs> Savage. And, and really, we go there, the dessert of the tasting menu. We're six people. We're spending <laughs> more than $100 per person. And the the dessert of the tasty menu is this vanilla ice cream with a slice of cantaloupe melon just as it comes you slice a cantaloupe melon that's it and they give me this vanilla ice cream totally white with no little black dots which give me the indication i don't need to be a fucking chef to know this which gives me the indication to that that's really vanilla that you're using for your ice cream. The vanilla bean, when you take the seeds out of the vanilla bean, they're black seeds. They do not dissolve into milk, water, whatever yeah. you put in. I mean, just store-bought. Yeah. Yeah. It means that was a white bought from whatever, whoever, ice cream. Or even if you make it your own, actually, if they make it, I swear to God, you should suicide right now. <laughs> if you make that fucking vanilla ice cream, you should suicide right now Yo. because... You, they made this white vanilla ice cream with a slice of cantaloupe melon as the main dessert of my tasting menu. I was so pissed, and I told the pastry chef, because there was two people working on pastry, which with labor costs that we know is crazy right now, which w- you want to say you give quality, you want to say this and that. There's two people working on my fucking dessert, and you give me a white vanilla ice cream with a slice of cantaloupe melon. Seriously? And this, I got criticized it criticized a lot for saying this but i think you should fucking suicide 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, either. dude, it's like, yo, sorry, anybody can I scoop do. out a fucking yeah. dryer scoop of ice cream and like, yo, like it's yep. it's white, it's yep. vanilla, it's normal. Michelin, if I you're hope be a Michelin star, you should Michelin be making is everything. professional enough to see this because I'm afraid that this year and next time maybe I'll meet you here on the podcast, we will be talking about restaurants that got the Michelin star. And because Addison, so the first year the Michelin was here, obviously, they didn't overdo it. They did the right thing. Michelin did really the right thing. They only gave one star to Addison because Addison is the best restaurant in San Diego by far. Addison. Uh, Addison. Okay. It's in Del Mar. So the hotel makes so much money that they have this restaurant where probably they lose a lot of money because they pay everybody's on a salary and blah, blah, blah. Everybody in the kitchen is on a salary. They give, they, they give this great food. They have three hostesses when you go there. Three, not one. They have three hostesses when you go there. You sit at a table. There's like five waiters that come to you. You order your, your food, whatever. It's the best food you can get in San Diego. And Michelin-wise, is the best. I didn't like everything, to be totally honest, but... But it's you're a very hard food. critic because I'm, when, I'm when we were talking about this before hard. Luigi, when, when Luigi was yeah. here, you were talking about how like on your days <clears throat> yeah. off, you go out to lunch with him and yes. you're just like, this food is shit. Yeah. And he, <laughs> yeah. he usually starts with, oh, this is good. And I'm like, no, this is shit, dude. Why? And I'll tell you why. I'm, I don't like to say this is shit if I don't give you an explanation. Mm -hmm. I really always try to explain why I think it's not good. Well, that's what you're good at, though. Because you, the first time I met that's you, we I talked about this. Yeah. It's like you told yeah. me my espresso was shit, and I was like... Oh, shit. You want to go <laughs> harsh, back to but, uh, Yeah, okay. harsh, but, yeah. dude, okay. it helped me critique <laughs> it. And, yo, since that day, my shit has gotten way better. So, like, yes. I mm -hmm. appreciate you mm -hmm. telling me this, but I also... At the, I took it with a grain of salt. With the, I shouldn't even say that. I took it the critique because of the fact of who you are because your palate mm -hmm. to me and it sounds fucking extremely weird when i'm gonna say this but your tongue is developed more than the average person mm -hmm. and for me today example we have one of our regular susan come in <clears throat> shout out to susan if you ever listen to this but she comes in every day she drinks a batch brew fucking every day and she drank our coffee today and i was like yo what did you like about that, Susan? And she didn't even pick up the sweetness in the fucking... She was like, it was rich, it was this, but she didn't know how to describe it, and she doesn't have a developed palate. And that's the thing. She's like, you know what? And we were talking, and she's like, your palate is more developed. And my, the barista who was standing there with me, he's like, yeah, you know, like, that's what you have to understand. Like, when you're talking to people who don't understand what they're looking for, mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know how to explain it or even understand oh. it. You yourself... You have such a developed palate that you could pick out acidity, you could pick out sweetness, you could pick out mm -hmm. savory, you could pick out umami. Like these things. It's a curse. It's a curse, but it's also <laughs> a blessing it's in a, a sense because when that. How do I say this? When that. I don't want to say a ray, but when that explosion of flavor actually does come, whether it's like a combination of a duck with fucking boysenberry and like mm -hmm. these sauces, and then you like. You, you have a sommelier to tell you to take a fucking slice of this, put it in your mouth, drink it with this wine, and it's like, boom, this explosion of flavor in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know how to appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, was exa that exact description that I gave you was the first time that I ever knew that like my tongue was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. because you just need a training. You just need to train way. it. Yeah, but training. then also you're looking for certain things. <clears throat> like I was describing this to all of my baristas here. My brain, it's like a Rolodex. When I'm tasting coffee my brain starts shuffling like a Rolodex. And then when something comes up, it goes poof, like a little fucking, mm -hmm. like a little card pops up and mm -hmm. whatever that card says, that's what I'm tasting. So like, for instance, I was drinking this Honduras coffee the other day and it was, it was circling. The fucking Rolodex was circling in my head and then it's a purple and it just kept coming back to purple. And I was like, that doesn't describe a fucking flavor, but then it was like <laughs> purple. And then I came up with a name for what the coffee was that I wanted. And it was like, Oh, it was going to be purple, purple rain. That's what it oh, was going to be. I was nice. like, oh, sick. Oh, that's cool. But it was like raisin, plum. It was like this and that. And I was like, purple, purple, purple. And it just kept popping up in my head. I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? But that's how my brain works. Yep. It's like a little post-it that pops out. It's like, yeah. and then mm -hmm. it just keeps going. And it's, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how my brain works it when does. I'm talking about flavors. I think it makes sense with people that understand this, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. It's a little, it does make it's sense. a little weird, yes. but I appreciate yeah. what you say. That's my point is that I appreciate when you say my espresso is shit at the first time when we met, like I'm, this is like a year ago. <laughs> I was like, what the 
Fuck. <laughs> like, who is this fool? <laughs> and then I understood. And then I went to Rome. And then I went to Italy in general. And it was like, yo, okay, I fucking get it. You know, mm-hmm. but regardless. So let me tell you one little thing. <clears throat> if you say espresso, you're taking something from my culture. Yeah. I'm not coming and criticizing your culture. You're coming and taking something from my culture, uh, not even my culture, a different culture, and you're calling it exactly how it should be in the culture where you went to take it. Now, you want to do it wherever you are, do it right. Mm-hmm. This is why I still, uh, today, do not like Italian-American food. I don't like it as a concept, not as a flavor. A chicken parm is fucking good. Nobody's going <laughs> to take that out. <laughs> Nobody. I am not saying chicken parm is shit. Don't fucking eat it. No, I'm saying chicken parm is not fucking Italian cuisine. It doesn't make sense for mm. Italians to eat chicken parm. We do not eat chicken parm. I didn't see no chicken parm when I was in Italy. No. Swear to God. Swear <laughs> to like God. This. I'll tell you this. I, Did you see I any swear. fish in Alfredo? Yeah, hell no. <laughs> no I'll swear to you, there's no chicken in menus in restaurants in Italy. It's yeah. very difficult to find chicken in menus. There's a lot of pig. The, there's like, a lot of pig. Yeah, there's a lot of beef. There's a lot of beef. Lamb, lamb, beef. Yeah. Lot of we stuff. don't use chicken. But chicken, not no. much. Chickens are mostly made... To make the eggs and you eat the eggs. Yes, we have a lot of different preparations of eggs. But there's no fucking chicken parm. There's no fucking spaghetti and meatballs. There's no fucking Alfredo sauce. Even if, I want to say this very fast. Studying, I developed the fact that (coughs) Alfredo was actually a Roman from Rome, motherfucker, (laughs) that emigrated to America and had to make money, had to make his living. And he invented, he, he just put butter and... Heavy cream, cream and sauce, parmesan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he did it. He did this Alfredo, and and now he actually at this day owns a restaurant. The the sons have a restaurant in Trastevere, uh, which make this Alfredo sauce. But he's I, just a standout in in Roman cuisine. He makes this Alfredo sauce, but nobody fucking eats Alfredo sauce in Italy. And when I get the orders, I, I open an Italian restaurant here, and I get people like, "Oh, do you have chicken Alfredo?" I'm like, "No." Nah, I have fuck. I have a fuck you that you can get it <laughs> and, and bring it with you at home. Like there's no chicken Alfredo in here. There's no spaghetti meatballs in here. There's no bullshit. Like well, you didn't even like I that dessert. That dessert that you did. That was the exactly. fucking the, the eggs and bacon. Spaghetti meatballs in the Hawaii. That was the title. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. The the dessert. Talking about the lemon egg. Oh, the, the lemon, lemon egg. egg. Yes. Yeah, that yes. shit was incredible yes, with like the, the bacon, egg. and yes. then it was like it looked like mm-hmm. eggs and bacon, yeah. but it was a dessert plate. Yeah. So yeah. the bacon was actually the guanciale, which is the pork cheek, which is the real bacon that we use in Italy because bacon is a little overdone here in America, as everybody knows, it's si. bacon everywhere. Si, si. Bacon in Italian is pancetta. Pancetta is the belly that we cure and we make the salumi out of the belly of the pork, which is called pancetta. Americans know it as bacon. Uncured bacon, cured bacon, whatever you want to say whatever you want to eat but the the real difference is bacon is fat as fuck yeah as fuck is the belly is the belly of the pork imagine a pork living he doesn't do shit all day the only thing he actually does in his life is eat so he moves his jaw and he eats and he sends all those fats to the belly and he becomes fat as fuck and then they kill him and they do bacon out of the pork now the fats that he created in the belly are fucking not good for us. They're called saturated fats. Yeah, the and cholesterol. They're not good. They, it fucking kills your cholesterol. It brings it up to, and mm-hmm. your doctor mm-hmm. will be like, dude, your cholesterol is fucking st- stars up here. You have to bring it down. <clears throat> now, the guanciale that we actually eat a lot in Italy is the poor chick. The cheek it's like is a, actually a lean muscle almost. It's, it's much more leaner because yeah. that cheek at least is moving, is talking, is eating all the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, eating yeah. all the time. So he develops that muscle and it's a little bit leaner. And that's what we eat in Italy, guanciale. That's what we eat in Italy. It's uh, not the pork belly. It's not okay. the bacon. I see it on a commercial point of view. Like, I understand why this is happening in, in America. In America, there's 400 million people. In Italy, there's almost 50 million people. I see it. Like, you cannot give pork jaw 
to everybody. Mm -hmm. You have to have a bigger cut. You have to mass produce what you're doing. That's so America bacon, as a whole right there, mass yep. produce. <laughs> mass so production. bacon became so famous. But what I'm saying is try to, like when you go to an Italian restaurant, I'm not saying you go into whatever breakfast spot in San Diego, Breakfast Republic, or all of them, and you want to have bacon on your Benedicts, fine, get your fucking bacon. But if you go to an Italian restaurant, don't give me bacon. I don't eat bacon. No Italian eats fucking bacon. You give me guanciale. You give me the good shit. You give me something that it's a little bit healthier. It follows what they call the Mediterranean mm -hmm. diet. Mm. Okay, then let's follow that. Give me that. Don't bullshit me. Don't give me fucking bacon in my pasta. I don't want it. Because when I go as a European, I don't want to say Italian because it's not only Italy, it's all of fucking Europe. That the, the Mediterranean cuisine, it's all of Europe. By the way, a little a little parenthesis. I do not understand when they open places here and they call them Mediterranean cuisine. I, <laughs> I still have to this understand what the fuck that, that does mean. The whole Europe is on the Mediterranean Sea. I still don't get it. Like Mediterranean cuisine. Now, a lot of people, what I understood, they get it as the Arabic cuisine. Like Iraq or Egypt or like Iraq, hummus and like hummus rice. And stuff. Yeah. Like if you say Mediterranean, is almost on it's that almost side. like Israeli, almost almost. It's like yeah, Israeli like the zucchini, yeah. like not the yeah. zucchinis, but the, like the cucumbers, like yeah. the ones that look like little dicks, like yeah, yeah. like yeah. The, like this. Yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like it still one. doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense, but whatever. The Mediterranean cuisine, but still, just give me the mm. shit that is actually from there. I that's my main problem with Italian American with. Chinese American with Thai American. <coughs> I'm talking Italian because I'm Italian, but I see as a chef that there's a lack of every cuisine here. There's a lack of Chinese cuisine. Chinese cuisine here is very commercial. And who knows, knows what I'm talking about. Like Chinese people, if they listen, there's no fucking Chinese food here. There's no fucking Japanese food here. Where is it? Show Do me you know what's funny? Is. I actually had, I drove Uber and Lyft like two years ago. And I had a guy who his, I was talking to him. I was like, what do you do? He's like, I make Chinese uh, websites for when Chinese tourists come here. He's like, I go out and I find legit Chinese cuisine. Mm. And it's all in Chinese uh, or Farsi or not Farsi. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, Mandarin. Mm -hmm. it, all his websites right. are in Mandarin. And it's for Chinese people to come and look at where to go if you're really trying to get good food. He's like, dude, you believe it or not? He's like, it's few and far between. He's like, I send a lot of people to L.A. Mm -hmm. mm. San Diego. I mean, San Diego's it's tough. But I mean, and this <clears> is not to sound like stereotypical or racist, but it's like a lot of it is around convoy. A lot yeah. of it is around it like is. A, like Mira Mesa. It area. is. It is. It is. Yeah. I, I, the only good ones that I found until now are actually in Convoy Street. Dude, convoys where it's fucking at huge, though, yeah. like Asian Korean, food, yeah. Japanese, yeah. Chinese, boom, all over there. And I will make something racist and stereotype. Like if you see a lot of Chinese guys inside the Chinese restaurant, go there because it means that they're close. It makes to, sense though. I yeah. mean, but it's, it's like, to, well, it's I like mean, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, you want to see Mexicans in there. That's what I was gonna say. Exactly. Like, verb, like, thank you, <laughs> yeah. dude. I legit, if I go to a fucking Mexican restaurant, being a Mexican American. If I go to a fucking Mexican restaurant and I see some fucking like Hindu or anybody who's not Mexican making the food, like, bro, mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat there. Mm -hmm. If I see some Mexican people behind there fucking making the Mexican food, you know it's going <clears> to <throat> be legit. If they're only speaking Spanish and they got some mariachi music playing in the back, yeah, I mm -hmm. fuck with that. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I will say this as a, as a, as a precursor, or not a precursor, but as a, I don't know, a disclaimer. If you're Mexican... Most Mexicans can make food like really well. Like I'm just saying, like they can make anything. You just tell them, to, hey, make it this way. Be like, mm -hmm. see, yeah, yeah like yeah. boom, and they'll make it. It's like, yeah. but I think also what what we were saying as well is like if you actually see like Asian people in the restaurant eating, or like if yeah. you see Mexican people eating, because it's like if I'm an Italian, like for for us, for example, right, it's so hard to go out eat, to eat Italian here in San Diego I because bet. we don't like the Italian food that's here. 
But if you go to an Italian restaurant and it's full of Italians eating there, then you know that it's a good you know Italian it's place. So it's like if you go to a Mexican restaurant and all Mexicans are eating there, it means the food is good because they want to eat good Mexican food. They don't want to eat shitty American exactly. Mexican food. Yeah. Well, that's why. So, so the guys right there here. There is a couple of exceptions, though. Yeah, of always. course. Of course. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm going to say this. Can you can you say the name of the restaurant next door? I don't Piacere know. Piacere Mio. Piacere Mio. I don't ever know how to say it right. Thank you. But the gentlemen who come over there, because of your critiques of my espresso a year ago, <clears throat> I created the Roma espresso. Mm -hmm. Then after going to Europe, I saw how cheap espresso was there. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, Eric, we can try this thing. Dollar espresso shots. Nobody be doing that here. And it, but it's the single origin Roma espresso. And it was inspired by you, you guys. The Italians next door would come in every fucking day. And I went over there for the first time a couple weeks ago. Never been in, been in there to eat, ever. And I can't, like the guys all saw me. They didn't recognize me, though, because I was just kind of like chilling. And I was with my homegirl, Bryn. And Bryn was like, this is the head roaster over there. And they're like, oh, brother, like, what's good? And they were like, yo, you're espresso. They're like, whenever we have Italians come into town, we bring them here. And they were just telling me, like, yo, your espresso is fucking, like, legit. Granted... I don't serve the Roma anymore because now that it's passed mm -hmm. and it's kind of like whatever. It's I'll bring it back occasionally, but they were like they still come in here and get espresso. But they were like, "Yo, we appreciate that you do it like where they do back in Italy." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Mm -hmm. That shit to me was like that's all I need because I'm inspired by the traditionalist, uh, the traditionalist aspect of like, "Yo, if you're gonna do a cappuccino, you do it in thirds." And when I went there, they did it like that. And I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like, mm -hmm. you're going to put some fucking latte art on my goddamn cappuccino? That ain't no, that, that's not how it was done. Yeah. Like, yo, I got to do it Italian style. But then you go and then you see the homies next door and they come over here and they're just like drinking the espresso. It's like, hell yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. like you in a sense, you made it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, it's but really true. Um, damn. Okay. Guys, we actually did an hour 43. We're, we're Ooh, just keep talking. We're but good. before oh, okay. we get out of here, I wanted to make sure. So my Stoso Foods, that's where people can find you. That's what, yes. that's what you're doing right now. That's what we're doing right now. Is there Opening any in North Park. Yes. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Because I know yeah. we've, we've gotten on like politics. Yeah. We've gotten on like all this shit. Yeah. What's coming down the pipe? So coming down the pipe, we're dealing with the landlord in North Park. Okay. Uh, where we really want to get a spot there where we can sell our pizza, where we can sell our... Italian vibe, let's say, in North Park. Uh, but mostly what we're focusing on is to sell this basis, this pizza, to all over America. We're shipping already to Alaska. Alaska? Like, yeah, supermarket yeah. Damn. and restaurants in Alaska. Okay. And we're shipping to New York, to San Francisco, to Texas, and we're... We're kind of spreading all so our you're getting your, all you're over. getting your word out there. You get like people are knowing who Marco <clears throat> Mastoso is. Yeah. Yes, mostly the the dough. The okay. dough. The, this time is not too much about me as a chef. It's more about the product, how good it is, how quality, really quality is behind it. We really cook one at a time. We do the dough and all the bullshit, blah, blah, blah. But it's going great. We have already more than 10 restaurants in San Diego that sell our pizza. And we really want to go big on this project where I w we develop the food that we can wholesale to other restaurants to share. And we want to get bigger than just one restaurant where you can appreciate my food. I am going to come back as a chef in 2020 for sure with a restaurant and everything. But right now what we're focusing on is mostly to develop the brand to actually be able to give quality to a lot of people that they can say it's their dough i don't care like we sell the dough they sell it as their homemade fresh pizza i'm super yeah. fine with that and we continue to give good quality food to people because this is part of the educational process that we really want to put in place like this is much more far behind the maestoso as a guy as marco maestoso as the chef i really don't give much more than a fuck about <laughs> me about myself i really want the people to be educated to actually eat in the right way yeah. so we're giving our knowledge our food our process to other people so we're selling it and far from now like uh, until now it's going great and we want to really develop this and then i'll be coming back in 2020 to shock a little bit san diego because it really needs some high quality food yep. to set a standard mostly because the standards right now is so low 
that we're saying that good places are good just because there's nothing better. This is the real problem. Like people places, are mistaking high mistaking. price for quality. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you go born and raised. You pay two hundred dollars. Mistaking for a fancy steak. restaurants, yeah. large yeah, build outs, yeah. million dollar build outs for, for quality. Yeah. quality. Born and raised. The coin group. The, 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 the so many groups. They're spending so much fucking money on the build out when they don't see that the money they should spend it's on the people. It's on the fucking chefs. It's on the the kitchen staff, the front of the house staff. And we're overpaying for service, which this is one of the biggest problems right now, I think. Like there's restaurants putting 4% surcharge for service in the restaurants. Like you go to a restaurant, you pay your bill, and then there's a 4% surcharge because they say, oh, labor costs went up, so we have to pay our people. Like, fuck you. Like how much was the pasta? $20? Just put it at twenty sixty-five and shut the fuck up. Don't tell me you have to get 4% to the people working with you like just put a different price and don't bother with people because as a customer as as, an, as somebody that comes at your restaurant when i see a four percent surcharge i feel like you're robbing me a four percent like yeah. you you're telling me that you're gonna add a four percent to my bill just don't fucking do it because i will still order the pasta yeah i will still get it just put it at twenty dollars and sixty cents and you sold me the pasta anyways. Not that it was 1999 that would buy it, 2065, oh no, fuck that shit. No, I would buy it still. Just lower, uh, higher price, 60 cents, because you need to do it, because I understand you need to do it. You're right in doing it. But just do it like that, and don't tell me that I have to pay, because then tips. We go to the service problem in America, where I go to a restaurant, I have to get 20% tips. I feel bad about that sometimes because maybe I didn't like something about the whole service. Mm -hmm. And when I say service, I mean <coughs> from the plate because that's part of my service. The plate that you bring me is part of my service. And I feel bad about like maybe something in the whole fucking thing went wrong and I don't want to give you 20%. But yeah. then you put a 4% charge, then I'm like, okay, I will give you 10% tips for the food and everything and the service then you put in four percent now i'm gonna give you six percent tips try to leave fucking six percent tips Jesus in a restaurant Christ. they will follow <laughs> you, know, you yeah they will, they be will like, what follow the you out. Chase they you will they the will street. chase you out did you wreck somebody's life on that they'll be like what the fuck happened what yeah. did i do what did i do, yeah. Yeah. What did I do? they really would they, i i remember my waiters when they got 15 percent tips they was like should I go to that person and tell why they didn't give me 20? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, asshole? Like, they <laughs> just give you 15% more of the check that they were supposed to pay. Just shut the fuck up and get the money. Yeah. Like, what is it? You're chilling. What is this? You're chilling, bro. Relax. Like, yeah. You're Especially if it's it. cash. Like, yeah, you're yeah. paid to be here as a server. You, I already pay you to be here. It didn't, doesn't have to be a rule that everybody has to give you 20% just because you were nice yeah. you're paid to act to those people you're faking yeah your it's fucking your job smile is your job to the people you don't have to smile four times because they will give you 20 percent. yeah it's ridiculous it's interesting working in service as a person who like works behind the counter mm -hmm. mm. when you like because you see both sides yeah i definitely enjoy going to a coffee shop and like nerding out and be like hey talk to me about this coffee real quick because there's some people who enjoy that. But then there's also, like, when you're on the other side, you know how much shit people are talking mm -hmm. about customers, especially. Mm -hmm. And then so it's like, like, you see both sides and you're just like, what the fuck? And mm -hmm, then yeah. when you go to tip somebody, you're like, damn, I know that person right now is just talking mm -hmm. mad shit because I didn't give them that. I'm like, yeah, you know yep. what? You fucking suck, bro. Like, <laughs> yep. what the fuck? <laughs> like, I work in this. Dude, that, that for me, as you're saying this right now, like, that strikes a, sp a personal chord for me because working in fuck the coffee thing, fuck the food thing. We're in hospitality. Mm -hmm. People don't come in because we're fucking like making this amazing coffee. Yes. They like the coffee, but we also like, and you walk in, Hey, how you doing, Susan? Yes. How you doing, Tim? Experience. How you yeah, yeah. They fucking, they feel like they're welcome. Yeah. And you're paying for that experience. So, at the end of the day, when you're like giving them that experience, if you're like, if you fucked up and you know, you didn't get that tip, you know what you did. Mm -hmm. 
you got to, dude, I'm a big stickler for that. I'm not afraid to not give somebody a full 20%. I straight up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've been, oh. I've been in spots within the last year where I didn't mm-hmm. give a tip. I was like, nah, fuck that fool. I, or like, mm-hmm. if they really piss me off, it gave me some attitude or gave me some pushback mm-hmm. or something, I'll leave like a penny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Yeah. Don't give me that shit. I work in hospitality. You're going to give me some attitude? Yeah. Are you for real? Are you for real? Yeah. yeah. Nah. Yeah. Nah, I ain't fucking <laughs> nah. with this. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yep. Like, I, but I will always give 20 for the most part. Like, mm-hmm. when, it's good, it's good. when it's good, it's when it's good, it's good. But if you're going to give me some attitude or some pushback or dude, eye rolls. Oh my God. You fucking oh roll God. your eyes at me. Oh my bitch. God. <laughs> oh, hell no. Like, oh, I'll be smiling. Yep. I'll be smiling here. But inside I'm like, have you ever seen inside out? The, the Disney, like yeah, that yeah, Pixar, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that little <laughs> rage guy, just ah, like do you eye rolled me, bitch. Mm. Yeah, hell no, yeah. this is not happening. You did yeah. not just eye roll me. You are not getting a tip. You're I'm not sorry. getting my money. Deuces, <laughs> deuces. I'm out. Like yo, yep. I take the food. I'm mean, like, or oh, dude, I think I left a note once. This is so petty. <laughs> I'm not. I can't believe I'm about to admit this. But I like wrote a note. I was like, can you give the tip to the chef? Because your attitude sucked. Oh, and like, shit. yo, I don't give a <laughs> fuck. Like, yo, the chef was good. Food was great. Your service sucked. Give this tip to him because this ain't for you. And yeah. then just signed it. Kano. <laughs> <laughs> Love Kano. Yeah, dude, straight up. I don't give a fuck. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Dude, either. I know it's not going to happen, but it's like, I just want to know that you sucked at your job because I work in hospitality. I've been working in hospitality for fucking as long as I can remember. I honestly don't even know. It's probably been more than 10 years that I've been working in hospitality. Mm-hmm. And I've learned what not to do and what to do. And when you shit on people who are coming in to basically feed you, that's what it is. When you really realize like, yo, I'm like they're I'm providing a service because they're providing a service to me it's for I can live my life. Mm-hmm. You realize mm-hmm. like you got to shape the fuck up. Yeah. yeah. Put that smile Absolutely. on, do your goddamn thing, but also give your mm-hmm. passion and shine through that. And that's where it really separates us. Mm-hmm. Yo, like you, I don't have yep. to learn these people's names who walk through the door, but I, but I do because I know it's benefiting not just me; it's benefiting our whole crew. Yep. You're creating an experience for everybody, and that's that. I think I feel like that translates, whether you're a chef, whether you're a roaster, whether you're this, whether you're that. When you're working with everybody to make everybody's experience that much more pleasurable, it just makes everything like more harmonious. Yep. Fuck yep. it. It does. It really does. So is there going to be a, um, a shop open or like not a shop, but a, uh, a, a, a yes. restaurant opening in 2020 for there the is. Mystoso group here? There is. For sure. <laughs> there is for sure. Yeah. Yes. We're working on it. Mm. North Park. Um, it's coming. North right. Park is my uh, the ideal. I'm dealing with the landlord right now. Okay. Shout out to the landlord fucking gave us the place at the price. It's a, at the right, pri- right, price. Right, right. Price. <laughs> right price. Right price. Right price. Please. <laughs> but yeah. Por favor. Yeah. Por favor. But, uh, yeah. I mean, definitely one thing we did learn from the last place was we're not going to jump into anything. So we're definitely, you know, taking our time, you know, doing the right move. We're not going to, oh, you know, we got to open in 2020. So let's hurry the, sh- the fuck up. You yeah. Know? No. Um, if it happened, we're hoping it's going to happen. We're aiming for it to happen. Mm-hmm. But we are, you know, doing it right. Okay. Doing yeah. It right this time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Fucking A. All right, guys. Well, we'll end it there. Yeah. And uh, everybody go to www.maestosofoods.com and buy your pizza. That's M A E S T O S O F O O D S dot com. Yep. Yes. And Instagram, where can they find you? Maestoso or Maestoso Foods? Maestoso, Maestoso Foods, all one word. All right. Yep. And we're any, everywhere everywhere <laughs> everywhere and then uh where can they cause they can buy them at whole foods right now right at sprouts at sprouts. sprouts sorry 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 sprouts, sprouts. yeah in the we're frozen in, food section in the frozen, frozen food, food section, section. R- yep right yeah. now we're at the east lake sprouts and, and we're Chula starting Vista. to expand in chula vista um and then we're going to start expanding um yeah so but you know for now i would definitely suggest buying it on the website it's your best bet come to, right to your door so yeah. all right yep all unless right. you want to Drive to Chula Vista, whatever. <laughs> Your yes. choice. Nobody. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, 
Dalila, Marco, thank you so much thank for coming you, on the show today. It's great. As and always. Fuck yes. yes. And this will, like I said last time, this will not be the last time you're on the show. Yeah. In September, we're going to schedule you guys for September, and then we'll talk about that Michelin, Michelin star again. Star. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We All are. Right. Let me get some. Thank you. Uh, Dalila. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank Peace. You guys. Thank you. Peace. Yes. Thank you so much to Dalila. Thank you so much to Marco. I appreciate the hell out of you too. It was amazing. I mean, like I said, I mean, we went all over the place, but at the end of the day, you heard about my Stoso's return and they, they are coming back in full effect. And get out there, go support the homies, go pick up a pizza from your local Sprouts, wherever, order it online, get it where they said mystosafoods.com. And yeah, love y'all. Thank you so much to the sponsors of uh, Caffeine and Green, Thorn Street Brewery, Seven Seas Roasting. And thank you to all of you beautiful people out there who keep supporting Caffeine and Green. Caffeine and Green is what it is. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And until next week, stay up, y'all. Peace.